World 2023 World's Championship from Moncton, New Brunswick, Canada. Paul Grant, Dan Castle, Greg Guglia has some technical difficulties, lost our stream. It does happen sometimes, so thanks for your patience. We're in our first match of three. Undefeated Maria subs 24-0 against 6 and 18 Harry's All-Stars. We'll update the scoreboard in just a moment. Dan Castle keeping scores manually, and we'll put, Greg Guglia will put them back on the screen when we get caught up here as we're back to the top of the order. Jake Cook is on the right now. And Brian Feast on the left for Maria Sub. So Jake has on fire. He's got three spares in a row. What's Jake 35? Dan, Dan, give us an update on the scores if you can, please. And we'll get caught up on, the, on your score cam at home. Dan so Castle. A technical issue here. I'm trying to keep score manually. And uh, score the record in the second box. Jake Cook filled a spare. He's at 26, 35 after three. Another spare. And a spare in a fourth. 15 a ball. Feist was uh, all tens for his first three boxes. And it looks like he's got a nine box there. So he's at four, 39 after four. With John Zappi on the left for Maria Sub. Matt Rich on the right for Harry's All-Stars. All right, Dan, what do you have so far from these bowlers? Right, Matt. Matt Rich threw an eight in his first box and uh, nine in his second, so he's a 17. John Zappi, 10 in the first and a nine in the second. 19 so far after two. Zappi, one five sent to Worcester. Matt Rich getting advice from Mike Erickson how to play it. Very difficult, high piece of wood. I'm thinking he's going to go red line to Harvard, Dan, in the middle of wood and kick it over. I can't see it from my vantage point. But, um, We're way back here. Miles away, it seems. I see Matt Rich toss yes, his he ball. he does. Oh, I think a little more left it may have gone, but not easy anyway. Tough break. Zappi with spare. He's got it. His first mark. 29 of the ball through three in the first of three. First of three matches today on Kenneth and Bowling Network. Now it goes. Of course, that's a tough Paul Grant special. Miss the second, make the third. So that puts Matt Rich at 27 after three and John Zappi at 29 plus a ball. Assuming I read the scoreboard right. It's a little tough to read from back here. Matt drops nine. No wood to contend with this time, really. You could use the left if you had to, but clean shot. Go right at that pin whenever you can. Wood's never guaranteed. John Zappi gets eight. And that's eight on the fill. He's got the two and the seven mini split. That puts him at 37 through three here in the first. Right on this time, spare. No roadblock to contend with. 39 of the ball through four, is it? score John Zappi all right so that Zappi has with that 10 box is at 47 after four so he has spare eight Matt Rich is at 37 plus a ball uh, 37 okay all right Dan Esdale had a seven in his first box a spare in his second Brian Mayer 15 in his uh, had a spare in his first and is at 25 after two Dan is the defending champ of the Class B Atlanta Canopin Singles Tour. Out of Ryan's Millis Mass. Drops nine, kingpin for a spare. Brian Mayer has a five two right, split. With, with, with that fill, that puts Dan Esdale at 26 after two. Right on, another one. Mayer right down the middle. 
just three in a row for Dan, right? Is that right? Two in a row. Two in a row. You can't see the scoreboards back there. I mean, just Fred's getting caught up on the technology in just a moment. We'll have a sports game live here at home. And Eric said, nice out. How about that? A mayor, rather. A mayor of nine. Pretty good shot. Brian Mayer, we said earlier, 122 current average, 136 his best season inning average. A very impressive high single, 207, high triple 487, and high five at 781. So I might be off a little on the score. I went by the what I could see on the on the overhead, and it's a little hard to read. So if I'm off a pin or two here or there, your patience is requested. With that fill, Dan Estelle's at 40 after three. Mayor just missed inside. Not happy with that shot. Barry Mayer, part of a two-time world championship team. Estelle picks it up for a 10. Barry Mayer at nine. So Dan, the update in the scores, please. Uh, after four boxes, Dan Asdale's at 50, Brian Mayer at 43. And coming up into the next bowlers, Mike Erickson had two nine boxes, so he's at 18. And Fuller had a 10 and a spare. He's on a fell. Great shot to Dan, uh, to Greg Gouya, doing a great job. A lot of issues with Wi-Fi and streaming live, some glitches. Sometimes the, the stream just kicks out totally and doing a great job feverishly trying to get us back on live. and. Yeah, scoreboard up and running. Great job, Greg. Not easy. I couldn't do it. I could never do that. Well, Greg's working with my chicken scratch here. Yeah, but I have a wood winning chicken scratch. Mike Erickson, pound seven. Wobbling triangle is the not, one goes down. Now it's the 6 10. Here's Brian Fuller Jr.'s strike bid. Oh, you're going to be kidding me. And that's a nine on the fill. That puts him at 29 after two. Erickson of is looking for his first mark on lane 14 here in Moncton, New Brunswick, Canada. He's got it. 28 of all through three. Fuller for another one. Yes. Back to back, 39 of the ball through three. First of three matches on Canlip and Bowling Network. Mike has a high single of 192. He's from Braintree, Mass, originally Randolph, Mass. 42 years young. Both bowlers on fills. High triple 445, high five, a 700 even. Out of Webster Timberlanes, Abington Mass. Once again, friends got involved. On the bonus, it's good. He has a strike on spare. Fuller just missed the pocket. He has a post. 44 through three. Mike Erickson going crazy. What do you got for him, Dan? I, I can't see Fuller's uh, fill. Can come it's in. a five. Five fill, okay. And open. Up, oh, no mark rather to contend with. Open in Canada means working on a spare strike in the States. It means you do not get a spare strike right, in that box. Fuller throws his ball. And he gets it eight. eight 52 box. through four. Can't see it. Eight box. This is a close one. Uh, I just could use an update on Jake Cook's score, and then uh, I think we'll be good to go. Um, are we off a box on that one? That's the only one. So Erickson, what's oh, Erickson? Jake what's oh, uh, Jake's on 40 and a ball. What does Mike have right now, Erickson now? With that right, Mike Erickson is at 48 plus a two ball fill. Yeah. And Fuller's on 52 after four. All right, Chris Parkinson. Right, has neither, both bowlers are at 18 right now, Chris Parkinson and John Winchell. Chris Parkinson, eight. Five and seven, John Winchell, five, two split. Chris recently threw a 184. He's had some monster strings at Ryan's and Millis. His high single overall is 172, high triple 433, high five 684. Did it during the mixed worlds. There's a spare. Oh, what a shot for First John Winchell. What a shot. Times. How about that? A 5 2 split. All right, both bowlers on a fill. Parker, they're both at 28 plus the ball. I think I'm just about there. I, is Jake Cook on 50 in a ball, I suppose? That's uh, the only he had one. a spare in his fourth, I see. Yep. Yeah, Jake Cook's on a so spare next. So he's at 45 next. plus a ball, if I'm reading it right. I mean, I, I'm having trouble with the legibility up there. 
And John right, Mitchell's Parkinson six. Four in his fill, six he each four. got a six in his spare. And what did uh, Winchell have? I can't six. see it. Six. Yeah. Parkinson just missed inside. Number one. Oh, he got it. The illegal block in the back. Throw the flag. He'll take it. Back to back. Take him while you can, folks. Winchell try and kick it over, hit the five, but nothing else. Four, seven, ten. Seven bucks. One ball left. That's fair. Okay. I think I may have a score cam after this. Let's uh, try that out as Winchell gets eight. An eight box. Eight box for Sean Winchell, right? So that puts him at 42. All righty. And Four we go boxes. back to the top of the order. Paul Grant, Dan Castle, Greg Guya trying to work through the technical glitches here in the first of three matches. We're in the first of three from the World Tournament, the Men's ICC 2023 and Championship with matches. The last bowlers, Chris Parkinson closed out at 34 plus a ball. John Winchell at 42. Yeah, 44. At 40, 44 and a ball. That's right. Thank you. Um, yeah, from here it looks like 50 and a ball. So taking a look, see. I think we're at last caught up. Right, Feast, Brian, Pete, uh, Brian, Cook on a spare. Takes eight more. He's already having a great start. And eight in a fill. Feast denied the spare. Good try. So Jake Cook closes out at 53 for the fourth box. Looks like I'm right. Oh, it's 53? Okay. Hang on, hang on. All right, Winchell missed his mark, so he, he's at 39 after four. Cook open. And Feast for the nine. All right, at the half, Feast is at 48. And Cook at 62. So Brian Feast is a 197 high single, high triple 465. A high five is 720. He's a 118 league bowler, 125 his best season ending average, 47 years young. A reset in lane 13. Brian Feast, part of the Maria Subs Moncton New Brunswick Canada team house record, 747 team high single. That is quite a number. Been on TV seven times in the past. Enjoys golf as well. Rain and Mass, Ridgey Hall Mass on the South Shore. He has the four spin left, the one, two, four, seven. And Millis, it's the Rick Kamerowski special. Made a living off that shot, teammates for years in front of that mixed league. If you make the shot, tell Rick Kamerowski, I made the Kamerowski special. We'll get a kick out of it. A post for Jake Cook. Feast inside, all but number one. Jay Cook, good bid, won't carry. Got the one, two, not the four, seven, ten. A very big time bowler. Makes a lot of big shots, can put a bunch in a hurry. Threw five strikes in a row and at the time of 194 house record in Millis as Feast gets a 10, 58 through six. And Jay Cook gets the short two for nine, 72 through six, good start. 71 through six. Okay, uh, it says 71, seven. uh, Feast is at 58. All right, so we'll fix the scoreboard here. Is it 71? Okay. All right, so 71 on the score correction. So Matt Rich right now coming up is on a fill, so he's a 37 plus a ball. John Zappi's a 47. I am, I'm, I'm scoring it as it goes. John Zappi now in lane 14, the captain. All right, again, Matt Rich on his fill. John Zappi closed out with a 47 after four. A 191 high single for John Zappi, a 128 bowler during his glory days. The Southpaw just missed the pocket. Right has the one, two, ten. Matt Rich. In the pocket off the wall has a triangle. The middle pin is the two, the left is the four, to the right and back is the five. 
And with that, Phil, Matt Rich closes out his fourth box at 44. Zappy Spare. 57 at plus one, second mark of the first to three. Rich, oh, he got a nice shot. A 45% chance for the average Class A bowler without wood converts. Stats by Kennel from Bowling Network, 54 half plus one. It looks easy, it doesn't go as often as you think. All right, both bowlers on fills. Zappy at 57 in a ball, and Matt Rich at 54 in a ball. On the bonus, on the nose, a 4-2 split, a check mark, and the 6-10. The five fill. Four fill. Gotcha. 61 half. Seven right. for Matt Rich. 61 half also. That ties both bowlers up at the half at 61 after five. Zappy, good bid. And what an effort, ball short. Four left, six right. Matt Rich, one, three, six, fair chance, trying for two in a row. Missed right, one of the three. John Seppi got interested in bowling by watching on TV growing up. And he gets a nice nine out of that. 70 through six in the first of three. Matt Rich gets the 10. Also, well, he's at 71 through six, make it. So as Paul said, 71 for Matt Rich after six boxes and 70 for John Zappi. Dan right. Esdell has 50 after four. Brian Meyer, 43 after four. Neither bowler is on a mark. Right now, Harry's All-Stars, six and 18 coming in. Lead undefeated Maria Subs, 24 and 0 by 19 pins. In the marks. On the board, favor Harry's All-Stars. Brian Mayer drops nine, kingpin for a spare. Wood to help, a post for Dan Esdale. Is it two marks, Greg, or three? I can't see that. Is it two or three marks? For uh, there are two marks up on two Harry's Two marks for Harry's All-Stars. All on left to fill. Okay. Uh, none for Maria Subs, so a big mark advantage it, developing. There's one mark. now, though, for Maria well, Subs. there's a mark now. Brian Love Mayer. It. 53 out plus one. Esdale can't connect for the spare. Yeah, I ran the horseman down nice. Uh, checking my levels. I think I'm a little quiet. This should be This should be better. And Dan drills it for a 10. So 60 at the half, half. Five boxes. Dan Esdale at 60. Mayor at 53 and a ball. Put that smudge up. There we go. Craig Holbrook, Sean Baker sitting out. As you have several bowlers in the team. Aaron Spiller also not in the lineup right now. There's some depth. Yep. Four. Talk about it. And adding Sean Baker, what a luxury that is. Sean Baker in their team now. Spread Eagle. Tough fill, 57 half. Dan Hesdell. Smooth ball. Spread Eagle throwing the eight. Side by side birds. And that's right in the middle of the Paul Grant shot from Ayer. Over 42 years out of fun time lanes. 781, high five, high triple, 487, a high single, 207. That one got away from Dan. Really put a bit on that, but. That's not something you see every day, is both these bowlers missing everything. Mayor grabs three for a seven, 64 through six. Esdale, big out, half Worcester out to five, 65 through six on Candlepin Bowling Network. Now the fourth group of bowlers, uh, Brian Fuller Jr. on the right, Mike Erickson on the left for Harry's All-Stars. It's a 13-pin lead. It's been close pretty much all the way. Two all points right, for a win, one for now? tie, two for total. All right, so at this point, uh, Mike uh, Erickson has, is on a strike. His first ball is, he's uh, 48 plus two balls, and uh, Fuller is open. In the last box, he's at 52 after four. Brian, 3-6 right, 7-11. Erickson trying for a double. 
On the crossover, seven. The triangle is the three middle, five left, six right. Working on a strike on lane 13 here in Moncton. Fulo, what a bid. Right behind the seven. Heck of a try. Like the car said on Candy O Album in the 80s, it's all I can do. Erickson missed right. Excellent competitor. Is that nine? That's eight. Eight, okay. eight in the strike. 56 through four, great start. With uh, Phil, Mike Erickson is a 56 after four. And now a 9.65 half. And a what 61 a half for Fuller and So that was, an, I believe, an eight box for Mike Erickson. So that puts him at 64. Is that an eight box or a nine box? Uh, that was the nine box for each. Right, showed. So 65 after four, five. Mm -hmm. Brian Fuller Jr., tough leaf, four left, six right. Mike Erickson pounds the strike zone, but look at this. A spread eagle plus the five. Ouch. Harry Zoll says up 21 here in the first of three. Fuller hit his object. Some people say that five pin helps though. You get some sidewall action sometimes off that five pin. This would bring the house down. Oh, what a try. Sliced and diced it and almost pulled it off. What a try by Mike Erickson. Pull a 10, 71 through six. Mike Erickson will take a nine. That'll give him 74 through six in the first of three. All right, and as Paul said, with that nine box, Mike Erickson is a 74. And uh, with a 10 box, Fuller is a 71. 20 pin lead for Harry's All-Stars. Looking for the upset, in a sense. Anybody can win. These teams are really talented, all 24 teams. This now is our Fuller's second day. Fills. Or now Chris Parkinson is a 44 and a fill. John Winchell is a 42. Strike, but he's got it. Pumps his fist. 52 half plus two. Parkinson, the spare is eight. 52 through four. But John Winchell threw a 190 about three weeks ago in his Tuesday night speed league. He has three 190s for his high single in his career. Parkinson, will it go? Oh, come on. It won't go down. They were hit. That's a pesky one pin of Greg Guya. <laughs> it puts out of mis his misery with a 10, 62 half. And stay down. Boy, Dan, uh, Chris Parkinson's bowling really well, hasn't he? He's, yeah, he's, he's amazing. And one thing I can tell you about Chris, for years I was in a Monday league with Chris and they <laughs> awarded a, a prize at the end of the year for top single, top triple, high average. And then we had to have invoke the Chris Parkinson rule because he took all three. And so we uh, made it limited to one. You could only get one of those awards. John Wunsch on a strike has a diamond. Would to help that sleeper pin the eight. Parkinson for strike, eight. Wiggling eight left, 10 right, wood to work with. For a spare and strike. Oh, just missed right. Two and, of the four. And with the eight on the strike, Winchell closes with a 60 half. Parkinson hooked outside. Trying to hit that tip, tip left wood there. Fine line between hit, hitting that and missing it. And John takes a nine, 69 through six. And Chris Parkinson will settle for a nine. He's at 71 through six. I can take a score update at this point. And we go back right. to the top of the order. Yes. Uh, let's take a look. There we go. And there we go. You see it here. Absolutely no marks on the board, if my understanding is correct. So uh, All marks are, there's no open boxes right now. Yep, so it's a true 20 pin advantage, thanks to the fact that, let's see here. Uh, yep, it's 11 marks to eight right now. Uh, pinning is uh, six in Maria Subb's favor. Jay Cook drills nine, kingpin for a spare. 
Here's Brian Feast. He's in the pocket for a strike. He gets eight. He's got wood perfectly placed between the four left, eight right, and one rolling around in front. Cook. Oh, got robbed by the wood. Tough, tough break. <coughs> I don't think he's trying to hit it that way, but those roadblocks are difficult. Feast got it to go. 68 in the ball through seven. Second mark, Cook at nine, wasn't there. 80 through seven. And so Feist is at 68 plus a ball. Jake Cook at 80. Jake basically bowling his whole life. He said at birth he bowled. Joyce golf, working and camping. I think it's 30 to 36 later this month. 19 pin lead for Harry's All Stars. No marks on the board. What? Except for Feast, of course. Except for Feast right now. Cook, Cook is at 80. Feast is at 68 in a ball. Mm -hmm. So he can cut the single digits with a strike. The only mark on the board is Cook first. 1, 2, 4 in front, 6, 10 right. Brian to lane 13. Crossing over, another strike. Looks good. He got 8. Couldn't get that kick up the wood he thought he would get. 9, 10. So with that fill, Feast is at 76 after 7. On that spare. Cook missed everything. That cuts the lead down to 11 pins. Carries All-Stars in the lead. They are in the playoffs last year. Feast. Oh, wow. Whoa. I guess lower on the wood takes one of them, but how in the world do you take both? Jay Cook, nice out. He'll take a 9, 89 through 8. And Feast gets one for 9, 85 through 8 on Candlepin Bowling Network. Over 850 videos and climbing, never a charge, always free. Please subscribe to our YouTube channel, Candlepin Bowling Network. Follow and like us on Facebook as well. Nothing like the great game of Candlepin Bowling. Coverage all week long, 9 o'clock local time, Atlantic time, every day through Saturday. 8 o'clock Eastern time. Playoffs start Friday afternoon around 3 o'clock, around 4 o'clock. And then Saturday, quarters, semis, and finals all here on Kennelton Bowling Network. Matt yeah. Rich, four horsemen plus the nine behind the three. 71 through six. John Zappi, 70 through six coming in. Zappi finds the pocket, and he has a wobbling six. That goes. The 10 goes. That's a break. Now the seven pin for a spare. Rich, beautiful shot. Oh, can't get to the 10. What a try. Spare. The former Easter Classic champ, his third mark. 18 a ball through seven here in the first. First of three matches today. Matthew Rich will take a nine, 80 through seven. Dan Castle will do the play-by-play -play in the second string and maybe the third. Rest of my voice for the playoffs. Through his first 85 game at the age of 10. Three in that ball. John Zappi on a spare. His team's down tennis, strike the tie. Smooth ball, but just missed inside. Only three, it's down to seven for Harry's All-Stars. 83 through seven for Zappi. Yeah, we've seen that diagonal cut through a few times. These pins disappear in a hurry, but that's not always a good thing if they're not mixing. Matt Rich, good bid of the object, 4 seven, 10 And we've got a good one here in Moncton. Oh, wow, what a shot that was. Incredible. Sometimes you can't make the easy ones. How about that? 93 and a ball through eight for John Zeppi. What a shot. What a spare. Big momentum swing. Richard, nine, 89 through eight. 
And what a, what a battle we got going here, Greg. Give us an update, Marks. Uh, yeah. yep. As soon as I don't break the scoreboard like everything else, uh, we got a six pins minus a mark. So with Marks 11-11, uh, this match is dead even. The average spare fill is 6.5 for pro bowlers. Strikes 8.3. Stats by Canada from Bowling Network. Pretty much a dead heat, as Greg said. Here's Dan Esdale on lane 14 here in Moncton, New Brunswick, Canada. Strike bid nine. Wood coming back. Will it go? It does! Slow motion strike. He willed it over. Meanwhile, Brian Mayer is the 5'10", the old Wolf discount chain. So just when we had a virtual tie, Dan Esdell says, not so fast. His yeah. high single, 171, high triple, 434, high five, 651. Over 38 years, parents were bowlers. I mentioned earlier, it's the Class B Atlantic Canada single to a championship winner last year. Mayor with the wood won't go. He also had a 10 pin ball at DNS. Dale, he's the only ball to have a 400 in candle pin and an 800 in 10 pin. That's a nine. For Brian Mayer, 73 through seven. Lead right now is seven, each side with one mark. Exactly, so that extra mark making the difference for Harry's all-star at the current moment, pending decent fill on a, a strike. Um, uh, pinning is eight in Maria Stubbs' favor. They've left eight fewer pins on the plate, but uh, not getting all the bonuses they want, so this match is tight. Esdale gets eight, his first year in the world. is all pumped up for this one. <coughs> has the four and the eight, great chance for a spare and strike. Mayer drills eight, he has the three and six. Dan also won an adult junior tournament with his son, Cody. He's into motorcycles and cooking. For a spare and strike, it goes. 85 through seven, 95 and a ball through eight. Mayors did not convert. He's up to three and now it's going back the other way to Harry's All-Stars. Mayor 10, 83 through eight. The lead all of a sudden is 17, and it's still one mark apiece. As you can tell by those yellow blips between total and game. Let's see what Brian Fuller Jr. can do. He's up against Mike Erickson. Twenty twenty three. 2023 ICA Men's World Championships on Kenneth Mullen Network, Moncton, New Brunswick, Canada at Fairlanes. Erickson, head pin hit, eight, nine, ten, strike on the delay. Fuller, nine, the king is the five. Harry's all starts stringing a few together. <laughs> Try to unseat the undefeated Maria Subs. For a spare, no, a rare miss for Fuller, Jr. 124 league bowler, high single 224, high triple 474. The Paul Grant special, missed the second, make the third. A costly 10, in a sense. 71 through seven. His high five is 743. High 10, 14, 10, high 20, 26, 16. Out of Academy Lanes, Pub 125, Haverhill, Mass. You know, it's your 127, the 2018 World Team Championship. Won the 2017 Easter Classic title, won $3,500. He drops nine. The spare fill, uh, strike fill for Erickson is three. Mike Erickson, three in the first ball. Trying to work out of it. What a bid. Six in the strike. 90 through seven in the first of three. Fuller missed again. Two nine drops, two missed single shots. You don't see that too often from Brian Fuller Jr. Erickson missed for a six. 
96 through 8. Pull another Paul Grant now special back to back. One Just second. The second, make the third. That's 10, 81 it's through 8. Yeah, it's going to be 91 through 8. My score. All right, 91 through 8. For some reason. Okay. We'll fix up here. Now we get a 19 yes. pin lead for Harry's All Stars. Huh. 12 blocks to go on the first turn. Two matches after this, all separate broadcasts on Panelton Bowling Network. I'm anxious to get this tech right for you guys. It kills me when I don't. So. That's all right. We're all perfectionists. Do a great job, Greg. Parkinson putting with a strike. It's nine. He's got the king. Wobble on the five. John Winchell in the strike zone. He gets nine. He has the ten pin. First spare. He's got it. 81 on the ball through seven. Winchell of answer, he does. 79 in the ball through seven. Hall of Fame eligible, John Winchell. Harry's All-Stars trying to hang on. They've got the lead right now by 19. Parkinson in the pocket, a diamond plus the seven. Five is the fill, 86 through seven. Lead is 24 right now. Winchell trying to get a strike. In the pocket, he gets toe tag strike right on cue. 89 through seven, 99 plus two through eight. Isn't it amazing? Parkinson, oh, just missed the eight. Isn't it amazing just how the moment seems to ar arise? You just sense how big a strike would be to put the momentum back in Maria's favor, perhaps, even though they've still got a bit to climb. What a hammer. Chris, 10, 96 to eight. Five boxes to go, uh, 10 boxes to go overall, two for each bowler. Here we go, Paul Grant, Greg Guya, Dan Castle, live, 2023 men's ICC World's Championship matches from Moncton, New Brunswick, Canada at Fairlanes. What a great Top match. Of the order. What a great match this is. The scoring is uh, balanced at the moment, pending some bonus balls. Here comes one right now. So leads 14 for Harry's All-Stars. The marks are two to one for Maria Subs. So a single digit virtually for Harry's All-Stars. Jay Cook, four horsemen, plus a triangle. Ryan Feast on lane 14. One and a 10, going for a 10. Cook, off with the head pin, not bad, in a sense. Nine for Feast, 94 through nine. Dan Castle, play by play, next string. And Jay Cook gets a nine, he's at 98 through nine. Mm -hmm. So right now it's a 14 pin lead still for Harry's All-Stars, two marks to one for Maria Subs. 24-0 coming in, Harry's 16-18, 16-18. And they're a lot better than that, obviously. Sometimes you just don't get the breaks. Feast right down the middle, spread eagle plus the eight. Jake Cook in the pocket, sweeps down eight, big and nine. Seven pin for a spare. Oh, what a shot! Oh, so close! The two and the eight left up. Heck of a try by Brian Feast for Maria's. That was going to just stay there, too. I thought there was a chance it might roll off. And Jake has that T shaped V wood. Made a lot of big shots. Can he get this one? No, tough break. No fault of his own again. He's had a couple of roadblocks. He should be in the 130s right now, but he's got two tough breaks in the wood. Terrific bowler, Jake Cook. And Brian off the wall, nice 10. After Eagle plus one, 104 opening string. Jay Cook, a Paul Grant special, missed the second, make the third. Again, no fault of his own, 108 opening string. And that should have been like a 130, 140. The lead is still 14 for Harry's All-Stars. Two marks to one for Rhea Subs, one right now. From Red Hot, John Zappi, 93 and a ball through eight. This mark could bring it to within single digits. A 191 high single, high triple, 485, twice 750, high five. This team's been together quite a bit, a few additions here and there. 
And now Sean Baker and the team. Zappi on the fill, goes right. That doesn't help, and four. 97 through eight, the lead is down to 10 for Harry's All-Stars, and the marks are even, one apiece. Matt Rich, three. 89 through eight coming in. Great start to the first of three matches today on Canlepin Bowling Network. Zappi trying to work out of it. Looks good. Will it go? Whoa, just about. Rich raises the head pin. Only got two. Five standing with the ball left. Zappi gets the 10. 10's a huge, 107 through nine. Yeah, especially when Rich has to pin this out. He doesn't get a 10, it's a single digit lead. But what a shot, how about that 10? That's a wow 10. Big time shot by Matt Rich, 99 through nine. More importantly, keeps his lead at 10 for his team. One spare for each side. The power of the third ball. Well, you never give up any shot. Every pin counts. Maria subs 12 ahead in the pinning. You didn't want to let it get any more out of hand than that. Zappi off to the right, just three. Matt Rich crossing over, mixing and matching, rocking and rolling. Seven. Three nine half woods to right, seven left. It's got wood to work with, four pieces on the deck. How's Dan Castle playing that shot? If you can hear me. How you playing that shot from Matt Rich, Dan? Zappy, good bid, five and a seven. Right with the inside, said Dan. Let's, let's see if we can get it. Good effort. Didn't get to the seven, heck of a try though, it wasn't easy. Spun the wood, spun himself, what a bid. Come down to the final six boxes for the first two points. Maria Subs undefeated, trying to stay that way. But down right now, Zappi, big 10. Nice start, 117. Matt Rich, he's pace, 10. 109, opening string. Hitting really well. 504, 494, Harry's All-Stars clinging onto a 10-pin lead. The marks are even, one apiece. And Dan Esdale's on a spare, 95 in a ball. Brian Mayer, no marks right now, 83 in a ball through eight. Yeah, overall, Maria's has 31 uh, markless frames and only lost 20 pins out of that. Harry's is pinning fine, 29 open frames, although 32 pins left standing. That could create a difference in the match. <coughs> Brian Mayer, diamond plus the 10. Dan has done a big bonus ball. His first time in the Worlds. Beautiful shot right down the middle. Perfection, a spread eagle plus the eight. We've seen it so many times today. Three fill, 98 through eight. Maria Subs has one mark of the board as Brian Mayer has the three right, five left. Esdale chops out two, four, one split. The lead is 13 for Harry's All-Stars. Mayor, eight, 91 through nine. Asdale, big time eight there. 106 through nine. They hold on to 13 pin lead, minus the ball from John Lynch on the anchor for Maria Subs. 13 pin lead for Harry's All-Stars. On the left. It's a lead for Harry's unless Winchell doubles it. Mayer hooks right, just four. Hesdale, back of the head pin, another split. Two, four, seven, ten. What a battle. Mayer, good shot, will it go? No. Seven pin, stands firm. Heck of a bid. Hesdale trying to kick it over. Oh, what a try that was. Ringing you can't ten. believe it. Ring. How close can you get? Ringing 10 pin. We saw that. The wood was angled the wrong way. It wouldn't likely have been the most helpful in the world, but it could have 
Could have caught that, could have caught the 10 itself. What was wrong with that shot? Mayer gets to 10, 101 opening string. Esdale, nine, 115, first string, first time in the world, Stan Esdale. Atlanta Kettlepin singles to a Class B championship winner last season. Right now it's a 12 pin lead for Harry's All-Stars, minus the ball from John Winchell, four blocks to go, but right now, it's Brian Fuller Jr. Now he had two nine drops in a row, and he missed them both last time up. Trying to redeem himself here. Crossing over, strike! No single pen this time to deal with. Big shot for four, 101 plus two in the ninth. We got a virtual tie. Believe me, they're reminding him. <laughs> That's how you do it, folks. Don't get discouraged. Mike Erickson, 96 to eight. On lane 13 here, Moncton. Off to the left, one, three, six, seven. Not a bad lead for missing the head pin. Not easy, but makeable. What a shot! Oh, you're gonna be kidding me. That looked so good, didn't it? I mean, how did that not go? Wow, that's a bad wow. It was emphatic, but I the pins disagreed somehow. Wow. <laughs> Unbelievable. <laughs> Big pins here. Oh. Missed it. A seven. 103 opening string. Now Maria Subs can take the lead with the two marks. It's a nine pin lead for Harry's All-Stars. Got a pin, that was a six and a seven in the last two. Brian Fuller Jr. is on a strike. John Winchell's on a spare next. The only two marks on the board. Erickson could use one here. They've led pretty much most of the way. It's been close. Fuller for a double on the nose, eight, maybe nine. Three pin, that ties it up right now. We're tied in the string. And they got another spare of the board next. Mike Erickson takes his time. Terrific bowler. Finds the pocket, eight, five in the 10. Tough leave, and that would roll back. Fuller missed again. He's missed three in a row on single pins. The strike him, the last box helped him out, but nine in the strike with tied. 5.31 apiece. Winchell has the extra mark, otherwise it's tied. And getting advice, Mike Erickson, how to play the shot from Jake Cook. He'll check that wood, Sean Baker. That's good. What a start for the morning, Greg. I'll say. <laughs> we had some technical issues earlier, earlier but Greg Glee, the, the genius he is, got it all working. We'd never be on the air if I was doing this, Greg. I mean, <laughs> I just feel all emotions so intensely. The coffee spill, the tech issues, oh, and know. then the emotional thrills and spills of this match. Hey, we'd, be, we'd, we'd be seeing it. God, see if we're perfect, Greg. Wouldn't Not easy to do a perfect broadcast. Erickson, oh, too bad. What I a guess, try. Guess the ball deflected on the high cap. Fuller wasn't there, nine, 119, opening string. He missed three single pins for spares. Erickson, nine, 112, opening string. Two blocks to go. John Winch on a spare from Maria Subs on the right. It's tied, 540, 540. Anything here is the lead. Chris Parkinson's been great this year. Let's see if he can get a mark to keep pace. What an incredible first string. Remember, it's round robin. Two match points for string, two for total. Everything to play for. So if nothing else, we're going to have a tight total going into the second string. Winchell on the spare. Takes down seven. The two and the one go. Four, seven, ten. They lead by seven. He's on a strike right now. Parkinson for strike. Nine, ten, strike. Clutch in the ninth. 106 plus two. What He's been terrific, like I said. He comes through big time. Uh, Wood's going to stick around for Winchell. I'm not sure it's terribly good that left Pete's rolling. Must stop by Kenneth from bowling rules before you throw the ball. 
Just an awesome first string. That is John Zappi talking up there, right? Yes. John Zappi, the captain. Better Ebola. A lot of TV experience, these two guys. Jumping on TV many times himself. Always in the running. Always up there. John won an Atlantic Candleton Singles Tour Class A, known as the Pro Division back then. The second one, he was a runner from Sean Taylor the year after that. Yeah, Nate John Winchell proudly flies Exeter's flag, but very familiar with the Lee Lanes TV shows. Nate Leeds won the first ACST match championship ever. Both in the early 2000s, Dan Candleton this skins recently. Mm. Oh, he got it! Wow, what a shot! Comes through again! Just like the U.S. Invitational in the quarterfinals. What a shot. The 4-7 into the 10, the spinning wood. Spare on strike. What a big mark to get there. Parkinson could double to tighten the match. That's the, probably his easiest way forward, although. 109 through 8, 119 the ball through 9. They're up 10. What a turnaround by Maria Subs, trying to stay undefeated. <coughs> Winchell steals seven, the 1710. 1-10. through nine is 17. Rockets needs a double probably. 1-2-10. Is there a path? Let's see. Uh, 30. Hang on. Big brain math, 581 there, and... Bunch of miss right that time. Hop, skip, and a jump. Parkinson, spare again! What a shot, wow! Spare on strike. 116 through nine, 126 of all the 10th. Coming up big all year, Winchell, nine. 135, first string for John Winchell. Is there a pass? 135, 576. Seven to win, is that right? Seven to win. Seven to win. They can win it still. If that's right, if our math is right, seven to win. And can he get it? We tie. No, they win. They win by one. Unbelievable let's, let's finish. If that's right, they win by one. Oh, gosh, please let my math be right. If that's right, let's find out. He's got 133. And I believe they go on their first. Oh, five seven, oh, wait. No, that's 572. Oh, my God. Oh, God. All right. Nope, it's 570. 582. They won. They won. But they, it, they it's won more up than by that. six. So our scoreboard nine. was off. So Harry's All Stars wins it in dramatic fashion. 582 to 576. Maria Subs dropped their first string of the match, the tournament, 24 and 2. Harry's All Stars goes to 8 and 18. And what a confidence booster that is. How about Chris Parkinson? 133. Wait a minute. Sounds good. I'll drop the levels here. But wait, 5097. Unbelievable finish by Harry's All-Stars. Dan Castle will take over on play-by-play. -play. Paul Grant, Dan Castle, Greg Gouillard on Candle Bowling Network. The 2023 Men's ICC World Championships from Fairlanes at Moncton, New Brunswick, Canada on Candlepin Bowling Network. Two matches left after this as well. Wrong one, sorry. Gives us a sec here. Second string is underway. We'll get everything set in a moment. Clear this out. Jake Cook gets a nine. 
and uh, Brian Feast did spare on that. Okay, so put that on screen, and Dan Castle, here you go. The scoreboard is up. Um, yeah, Cook had 113. Okay, so Cook had 113. I thought he was up higher. Yep, Cook was at 113. All right. Uh, we'll do something like this, and that'll make it correct. Now I've got it correct. Okay. Uh, All right. Oh. There we go. And Jake Cook picks up the 10. Feast with an 8 box. I see him. You got that from the official score sheet, right? Yep. Okay, good. Uh, do that. I think All right, I so cranked you up a little too high, sorry. That's okay. The margin in the first game was how much? It was six pence. Six uh, pence. Yep, we had Jake Cook a little too low there. I was wondering about that, I confess, but. Okay, second bowler's coming up. Uh, Wits are not about me. Okay. Matt Rich on a head pin. Very smooth ball he throws. John Zappi. John Zappi at uh, one point back before 2011 when they shut down, was also a bowler in the men's league at Fairway and Natick with several of us here, including Matt Rich. Matt goes wide to the left and will not have a spare in his first box. John Zappi looking at the seventh pin alone. He's got two pieces of wood there. He wants to make sure he hits the right one. That's better. And there's a mark. First mark of this game, or at least that I can see. Uh, first one for Zappy Feast had one uh, earlier on. Uh, okay. I, I missed that in the transition, sorry. So Matt Rich closes with a nine. A nine. And I haven't looked to see the live feed here, I imagine. If you can. I think checking on that was part of the reason my uh, stream went on the fritz, which with many apologies. All right, Matt Rich on the second, first ball, second box, game two. In the pocket, little light, takes out seven, Ooh. eight. And John Zappi with a five fill. Two, four, seven, six, ten. And uh, so let me catch up with the live feed while we're doing this. Matt Rich is on a spare attempt and gets a spare. John's happy looking to pick up this spread. Eagle minus a three and puts a great bit on it, but it leaves the six and a ten. So, yeah. So um, that, that Chris Parkinson strike was the clutch thing. The fill was easy, but uh, if he does not get that strike, uh, he, he does never fills and he loses the match. So it was clutch on the end, even though we mangled the uh, uh, reasoning why there. But Well, the, there's, you know, th that's the thing about the Maria's team. Some great bowlers I, on both teams. The Maria's team's got some huge bowlers and at some point we may see Craig Holbrook come up and uh, they could be down but you got those last two boxes they can come back at you if you don't have a substantial lead and that's what they almost did here yep. so Dan Esdale Dan Esdale on the right Mayor on the left Dan Esdale <laughs> has shared the microphone with me on a few occasions as has Matt Rich No substitutions on the board, as far as I can see, based on what's written on the overhead scoring. Spare for Dan Esdale. Ezzy, as we call him back home. And open box for Mayor. Have we mentioned we love the old school, new school aesthetic of Fairlanes here in Moncton, New Brunswick? Love the old school scoring combined with the 10 box. Nice global for Mayor. So Shannon Waters um, asked, if, is that, Shannon Woods asked if that's, uh, of uh, Justin Waters. And so they're bowling on 11 and 12, mm -hmm. the two academy teams, the Academy and Fenway Academy, which has a lot of bowlers that you probably know, including Justin Waters. Yeah, Waters is about to throw a ball on 11 for what it's worth. Meanwhile, back to this. Yep, over here, Esdale on a spare. 
Nice ball, full on the head pin. Give some late action here. He's hoping for some more, but it's only a five fill. And there's a strike for Maria Subs for, from Mayer. And uh, say hello to AJ Quinn. And to Shannon Woods, of course, and Carolyn Downey. Andrew Green, Dominic Palladino, Ryan Prouse, Lou Renji. And Esdale cleans it up with a 10 box. So they are at 25 for Esdale and 20 plus a ball for Meyer. And now we're going to see Fuller Jr., Mike Erickson. All right, Paul's looking for a microphone. Uh, I think now's just a good time as Erickson goes up. Go ahead. All right, next match, guys, we'll have New England flooring against Canadian team Spikes Chimney. That's next on Cannonball Bowling Network, our second match of today around noontime, local time, Atlantic time, 11 o'clock East Coast time. Thank you, Paul. All right, and Erickson starts out on the head pin and takes out five, maybe four. I can't see the eight pin there. Brian Fuller, Jr., is left with a diamond and I think a nine pin. No eight pin back there, but no spare either. Two sleepers. Yep. And uh, Fuller takes out that nine pin that was in the back that left the diamond. Brian Fuller Jr. has a high single of 224 that he bowled in Amesbury, Mass. That's a tough house too, I think. But, oh, certainly. Nine box for Erickson, eight box for Fuller Jr. But um, yeah, uh, Mark Ritchie has taken over ownership several years ago and doing a great job up there. I bowled there a couple of times and I think it looks pretty good. Formerly called Lafayette Lanes where Fuller Jr. Uh, holds the high single in the confines. Yep, now Riverwalk Lanes in Amesbury, Massachusetts, right on the New Ham near the New Hampshire border. Keith Beaupre has the high single under that new name. Erickson with a half Worcester right. And Fuller on the head pin. But left four on the left and one on the right. He's got some wood over there between the two and the four pin that might be helpful. Erickson's shooting at a half Worcester leave on the inside. And about as close to making it as you can get without making that. And Fuller has a spare on that cluster plus the 10 pin. Fantastic four and one mate. And a pin coming forward. He hit that hard. Erickson's going to try to clean up this <coughs> for 10. Um, Scott Henderson, uh, we'll finish this. Uh, that's a 10 box for Erickson. And yeah, I've seen those two, uh, Scott Henderson, regarding the CBS Sports posts. And uh, those are spam posts, correct? Yeah, correct? Yes, please. Yes, please. You're literally watching a live stream right now. Please do not click the link promising a live stream, but there's there's a sort of perverse honor to that of uh, growing Candlepin to the point that you're attracting these spam bots, I suppose. You know, it's a um, it's a bizarre back, not quite a backhanded compliment, I guess, but you know, this game is growing, the energy's growing, and uh, I guess the less than savory sorts are starting to take notice, but you know. Park's in in the pocket, Let's light hit. Let's take a look at the straightforward metrics, you know, uh, hundreds of you have been watching all through the week, and I'm sure will as the action heats up as we approach the playoffs come Friday and Saturday. Winchell with a banana split, 4, 6, 7, 10. Ryan Prouse uh, asks who won the first match, and uh, Harry's All-Stars won the first match, uh, which was the first game that Maria's team lost. And, oh, Parkinson a clutch spare there. Stole it from behind. He says he planned that one out perfectly, and Winchell putting a bid on the 4 6 7 10 split, and the wood doesn't go over to the right the way he wanted it to. So yeah, that was that was a that came down to the last box, Ryan. That was a great game and well worth watching the replay of that one. Although we did have some technical issues at one point and lost our feed, so. Um, but it, we came through. Greg can't got it back on, and we're good now. Mercifully. So Parkinson on a spare. 
Winchell cleaned that up for a 10 box. Uh, I spilled a Timmy's double double here. I, I cleaned it up good back here so that the Globe Bowling DJ and can uh, DJ Booth can be used again. But I feel on the fill, Parkinson off on the six pin picks up that right hand triangle for a three fill. Feel silly about that. Yeah, I do it a lot. I know that. I know that. I call the six pin my own alternate head pin. Um, Winchell, in the meantime, drops everything but the one three seven. Parkinson a little wide to the left and doesn't pick that up. He was trying to go for the pocket appropriately. Seven pin's going to go, add to the pinfall here. Winchell, nice spare on the 137. Just didn't want to trip on the cap there. So each bowler has a mark. And each bowler has a 10. So a 10 box for Chris Parkinson. <laughs> So Chris is a very good bowler. He had a 192 string this summer that threatened the then standing house record at Ryan's Family Amusements of 194 set by Jake Cook, who's coming up. And then that record was blown away in September or early October by Pete Crawford with a 227. Right on the right. We have Brian Funk Feast. He's at 22 after the second box. Jake Cook had a 19th first two boxes. Whoa! And Cook, goodness. Big ball. 7 10 split. Feast has six up there. Maybe seven, but there's only three now. Looks like a five. Doesn't look quite oh. right. Oh, Cook picks up the 7-10 split. The ball descended from the heavens. The bowling god smiled on Jake that time. And uh, Feast has a nine box. And Jake Cook smiles back. Jake's... Um, works with the kids league at Ryan's. He has a five-year-old son named Grayson who's becoming quite a bowler in himself. He does not use the gutters or the the uh, bumpers so, yeah. and a 10 box or a spare, a strike. Let me get it right. I'll, I'll go through all permutations. It's a one ball 10. Yeah, one ball 10 in the first. So that's a strike for fees. <laughs> I'm getting there. And uh, Cook has a five fill, four horsemen plus a nine. Uh, yes, he does. Thank you. See, I can see it. It's easier to see on the monitor than with everybody here. Jake's parents, Larry and Val Cook, also bowl on Friday night in the league that I'm in, as does Jake. And his uncle, Tom Hirsch, is not bowling right now, but is well known to a lot of the bowlers in the Candlepin community. And a 10 box for Jake Cook. 44 after four boxes. Feist is at 41 and two balls. And now Matt Rich. Matt Rich has shared the microphone with me a few times. He's done some nice live streams himself. We, uh, him, me, and Dan Esdale covered the Justin Waters versus Tim Douglas match that decided the ACST A South division this last spring. John's happy. He's on the two pin. Gets some good action, so he leaves the one, three, six. Matty in the right hand pocket. His ball breaks from left to right. And he leaves the seven and the eight pin with a looks like a snow plow in front of it in terms of that wood. Zappy off to the side does not pick up the first two pins. The one and the three. Matt misses that spare. The wood went around and didn't take up the eight pin. Tough one. I show Rich on the head pin throughout for the first three. Nine box for Zappi. Okay, so Zappi with a nine. And a 10 for Matt Rich. 
Matt Rich also has kids in the Ryan's uh, Youth League or Junior Senior League, we call it there. And um, so every Saturday morning, him and his wife, Leanne, who's probably watching and has been watching a lot. Hello, Leanne. And um, they're there Saturday morning with their children, carrying this sport to another generation. My granddaughter's in that league, and she bowls with them. That'd be a chance to fill out the row of yellow. Spare a thought amid the hubbub. Those were oh, good ball by Matt. But the six and the ten stay up. A pin came off the wall and went in between them. Did not carry them. Zappi looks like he's look. That's a triangle right. Six, nine, ten, and he's got it. No problem. Straight on. Didn't touch the wood. Five marks to none. Although Rich can spare this. And a spare for Matt Rich, matching spares in the fourth box for Matt Rich and John Zappi. Rich sits down at 47 in a ball, and Zappi at 42 in a ball. Love to see a full row of yellow lights between the total game, indicating all five marks up on uh, Maria's sub side. Fair thought, those were the first two match points. They've lost all, they didn't lose a single one yesterday. The only team that did that. And it came down to the last box, too. And I see Craig Holbrook there, <laughs> Hall of Famer. One of the best bowlers ever in this game. He was on the Maria's team. We could talk with him yesterday. And is it Mayer or Meyer? Uh, Brian Mayer, I have. Mayer. Yeah, that's what I thought too. And he drops seven. He's got a triangle right. Dan Esdale puts it on the three pin. Did that pick up? I'm sorry. Well, oh, that's no, I, I don't. No, nothing picked up, so. Okay, good. Mayer look, picks up the spare. That wood was dangerous, in my opinion, but he got it anyway. That's a good pickup. And look at this. Esdale's getting some late action and everything, but the two pin goes. Threatened to make a spare for him, but he'll make a 10. Pin perfect through three. Paul probably mentioned this before, but Dan Esdale is a 10 pin bowler, too. And a good one at that, if I remember correctly. Don't hold me to the stand, but I think you told me once your average in 10 pin is around 230. Both he and Mayer are pin perfect right now. I like both games, but I completely understand uh, Candlepinners getting territorial, you know. This is, I, oh, do yeah. like, I do like this more pure version of the game better. Yeah, I, I do too, and I've been a 10 pin. That's how I started my bowling life was as a child in Bainbridge, New York. My grandparents used to take me 10 pin bowling, and I picked it up casually here and there. A little more when I was in college, we did some bowling. I averaged at my peak probably about 180. Yeah, I remember watching uh, big ball bowling on TV, and I just remember... It, it's cool, but like they keep getting strikes and ten pins. What if we added like a bigger variety to the game somehow? Not well, fully realizing Candlepin was the game that provided exactly that. Nice and, spare. And we saw Brian Mayer put up a spare there by picking up the ten pin. Esdale trying to match it, and he oh! does. Whoa! That was a tough shot, and he got it. He got everything to carry perfectly. That was beautiful. Ezzy. That's one for the replay. It's real. Oh, uh, don't say the replay word. I know. I know. I'm giving you grief here. <laughs> we all hope. It well, can happen. So it, the, the, the funny thing, transitioning from 10-pin to candle pin is a little bit of a challenge, but not too tough. When you become a candle pin bowler for a long time, I was in Reno, Nevada for a business conference, and one of the guys there had lived in New England and was now living out in the West, and he said, let's go bowling. And he says, I know you bowl a lot. And we went down to this, it got to be a 100-pin, 100-lane facility big facility and I couldn't get my footing down right I, I, it took me a while to figure out how to do a five step again <laughs> and uh, my first game was probably under a hundred it, it was embarrassing <laughs> and so I got uh, angry and I just yeah, stayed up there and kept bowling and bowling it's a 24-hour facility and I bowled must have been 12 15 games until I got up into the 150s again figured out my footing but it really is different everything for me anyway to switch back and forth. Just like here, not only and there's start, a spare finish. for Brian Fuller. Yeah, we were, we were mentioning the spare making was a trouble for Fuller the last time. Now he's in the now he's in the groove. Mike Harrison the last one. 
Erickson's looking at the 2 4 10 split. This seems to happen from the newer generation of bowlers where they just like over pull the ball. Not exclusively to them. And Erickson is going to have to settle for an eight box here. But just trying to get it all to go at once. But in fairness, the spare's worth a lot more than just a few pins, and you do have the third ball afterwards, so there is a, there is some validity to that. The third ball, uh, I've been told by Steve Reno, who talk a little bit about Harry's All-Stars here. Uh -huh. Oh, no, th that's something you won't see in 10 pins. So Fuller filled his spare with a six, but his his leave is the whole back row. <laughs> Seven, eight, nine, ten. Some odd wood in there to try and kind of puzzle over what you're going to do with that. I hate it when that happens, but that's happened to me a few times too. It's got wood. And, uh, yep, that's usually what happens is everything but one goes. So you think you made a great shot. and I won't say anything about the bowling gods then, but they weren't favoring Brian Fuller in that one. But it's a six, Phil. And Erickson's looking at the five... Oh my goodness, a five, eight, seven, ten, and some wood there. And he hit, didn't hit anything. That very frustrating. Nine box for Brian Fuller Jr. Uh, take that away. And a nine box for Mike Erickson. The Harry's yep. All-Stars team. We got three or four. Um, does come out of my home lanes in Millis, Massachusetts, and they're named Harry's for Harry Reno, who was inducted posthumously into the Candlepin Hall of Fame in October, along with Steve Reno Jr., a senior, who uh, is a wonderful bowler, wonderful guy, and uh, is not here this year on the team. But um, shout out to Steve. This is his team. And uh, Steve Reno is well known in the community and well loved. And uh, he's on my team on the once a month league. So I get to see Steve a lot. He's a great teacher, great mentor. So that's Harry's All-Stars. John Winchell on the right. He's on a fill, puts nine in it. And Chris Parkinson on the head pin, but a little too much head pin. So a one five goes and everything else stays. So his leave is a spread eagle plus the eight and the nine pin. And nobody's ever happy about that except for your opponent. And Winchell, the wood works against him and does not get the spare. Looked pr like a pretty good ball to me. I guess a question of where he positioned it, but. Apparently not in the right place, but you know, slanted wood can sometimes deflect things away. You don't think it's gonna go. He's waiting for that pin to stop so the rule yep. in candle pin is there can be nothing in motion down on the pin deck mentioning throw a ball. and look at that look at that settle oh. mentioning it is an old chestnut but the gutters are flat here in Canada so pins don't get captured in the side as easy oh there you go he took it off the wall came back and the bowling god said okay we'll give you this one and in the meantime Chris Parkinson throws a nine box so that puts John Winchell at 29 Oh, hold it, you're catching up, all right, sorry. Yep, 39 after three, and Chris Parkinson's at 32. And early in this game, Maria Subs has an advantage of 28 pins. Yeah, that was just the equivalent of them saying, it's, it's just a prank, bro. So John Winchell, this time he plays the left pocket and leaves a diamond right. Parkinson on the head pin that time, and oh, it looked good, that wood was coming over, but it got stopped by the wood that was coming out of the channel. And uh, it's going to stop it again. I think he's got decent wood there. So both bowlers throwing at two pins and three pins for Winchell. He picks up the spare. And Parkinson matches it. Took advantage of that favorable leave. And we go back to our top bowlers, our first bowlers. I don't want to say top, the top of the order bowlers. Let's do that. Of course. Well, let's take a look here. So, Ryan Mayer, 59 in a ball right now. He's had three marks in a row, strike, spare, nine, spare. Jake Cook. Marks are 11 to seven for Maria's. So, 
Feast is on a strike. First ball is six. Cook. Is there a nine pin back there? Uh, looks like a triangle to me. And it is. So he misses regardless. It's going to be no spare for Jake. And Feast puts on a couple more. It looks seven. like seven fill. Okay. It, a little bit of a blur to that head pin. It looks like it might be a two pins here. And he's got an eight box. Nine versus eight, that was? Yep. Yep. Cook had in a nine, and Feast had an eight. Yep. I had Dan Esdale one pin too high. He's at 44 through four, I'm noticing. But we're not the official scorers. We're trying to be accurate. And generally, we do a pretty good job at that, but visitors at home, this is not the scores being submitted to the judges. Cook off on the three pin. Feast is on the head pin. He leaves a three, six, four, and Jake is Jake Cook is throwing it to one, three, seven, ten. His ball just might take this. So I was bowling head to head with Jake Cook in league one night, and he threw a five strikes in a row, a five bagger at me. That was tough. <laughs> I, um, we had done a roll off the New England candle pins a little, a few weeks before, and I picked up a triple, a 10, and another strike. Well, he showed me how to do a five bagger. That was a loud five strikes, boxes one through five. So Feast sets down with 65. Cook was 62 after six boxes. Believe all of the scores are correct from where I sit. All right, Matty Rich on the right. Matt Rich, first ball. He's in the pocket. And this is kind of a weird leave. Ah, there goes one. Just a six and ten now. And uh, John Zappi punches out a half blister. Rich looking to mark the 6-10 with Wood. He was on a fill before, so that's eight in the fill. Zappi has two in his fill. Yep. And Zappi goes through the hole, through the bunny hole. That's not a good thing to do. You try not to do that. He's, a lot of bowlers try to catch that inside of the head pin and make it go. That works really well. It's pretty when it works, but it's really ugly when it puts you in the hole. So he's taking a safety shot mm. on the left. Little too far to the left and just picks up a couple more. So he's got a six box, a four box, sorry. Six left, six up, four down, not six down, four up. Yep. Well, okay. there's the old generation uh, over pulling the ball a bit that time, so. Hey, don't call John Zappi old. He's younger than me. <laughs> <laughs> well, eight, now pinning is tilting eight in favor of Harry's All-Star. So overall in the match, it's uh, leaves seven in there. Uh, seven still in Maria's favor. All right, Matt Rich on a fill. He's a 65 in this ball. Hey, Rick Kamrowski. And oh. Matt gets caught up a little bit on his slide, and he does get a five fill. I don't know if he's going to call a foot foul. No, nope, I don't think he had a foot foul. Um, Zappi on the right took out four in one ball this time. And Paul is looking for a microphone again, so he'll be back up. So, but let them finish out the Spoxfords. Uh, Matt Rich, another spare, two in a row for Matt Rich. He is having such a solid string. And John Zappi, everything but the head pin. Matt Rich is on fire right now. Not seeing any big strikes yet, but we're definitely seeing a lot of nice, clean spares. And Zappi is going to have a 10 box. Which brings him up to 58 through 6. And for more from the field, here's Paul oh, we Grant. we got some updates. Paul Grant here at Moncton, New Brunswick, Canada. The World Tournament Men's ICC 2023 World Championship matches. Moncton, New Brunswick, Canada. The fair lanes. Nate LeBlanc, a 171 first string Ooh. for A-plus accounting. 678 to 574 first string in over the Hatcherman. Other action, lucky strike over Massachusetts team, 557 to 520, up 37 after one. TBD, Bowler Armor, and Able Construction. Able Construction hangs on, 557, 543, up 14 after one. Other action, Team USA, 590, unbelievable lanes, Oh, and there's a strike. Team USA up 38 after one. 
Outlaw rides MCW up 48 over 2.64, 600 to 552. Central Park Lanes, East Boston Mass. Falls to Avon Valley Lanes, Avon Valley Lanes, 548, 529, you're up 19. How about Fenway Academy, 622, 569, for last year's defending champs, Academy Lanes, 569, they're up 53, Fenway Ooh. Academy. Oakland Park drops to uh, Spikes Chimney Services, who we'll see next, 573, 554, a 19-pin lead for Spikes Chimney Services. Three more, Bolarama drops to Prosperity U, Prosperity U, 573, 557 of 16. New England flooring by 12 pins over Kingswood Bulletproof. We'll see them our last match today. 593, 581. And Bowling Ball Mafia, 587. Stars and Strikes still looking for the first win. 540. They're down 47. Thank you, Paul. So we saw Brian Mayer throw a big strike. And uh, Esdale put seven on a spare that he left in the six box and uh so far meyer has nine on his spare as dale looking to pick up a single pin spare and he's got it so dan Esdale with the spare in this sixth see brian kroll over on the left with fenway academy kim rick kamrowski hello and welcome ken redmond from california and a spare for brian mayer oh, brian mayer is just raking right now 99 and a ball through six strike 10 box strike spare spare strike spare and i see duncan mcdougall on the line too and uh ken uh, redmond hello from canada hey <laughs> all right we have mike erickson on the right and brian fuller jr on the left Coming up into their fifth box of this string. Hey, Duncan McDougal, good to see you here. Wish you were here. The way you're bowling, I think you will be at some point as a team. I wouldn't mind having you on, on the uh, streaming team. 13 marks to 10 right now for Maria Subs. Erickson coming up. He's at 36 after four. Brian Fuller Jr. at 51 after four. Erickson looking to try to get some catch-up pins here. Here comes Erickson first ball. In the left pocket. And is it gonna go? Really? It's, it's oh come on. Fall already. You were hit. Get over. And it's not going to go for him. Uh, in the meantime, Brian Fuller Jr. drops eight, and he's got the four and the seven. Hey, Billy Shiner. Billy Shiner um, says hello. Oh, no. Ooh. Missed a single pin, and fortunately for Mike and unfortunately for Brian Fuller, he missed oh. his, too. Oh, dear. So... Harry's All-Stars team trying to catch up here in the second string after winning the first one, being the first team to win a game against Maria's subs. Thank you, Gary DiPolo. I, if I said your name right. Um, we appreciate this, and thank you for the compliments. I'll tell you, it's a big wide view from up here, but it's a, sometimes a very lonely place up there. You, I had a look up there. we got to get a picture of us in the booth from down there, too. So we haven't done that yet. Yeah, the other pictures, I can't really post them to the stream. Could do, but it can be an intimidating view. Oh, look at that. Down. Nice ball from Erickson. And again, he threatens a strike. He doesn't go. Um, Brian Fuller Jr., spread eagle. Oh, Casey McCool, I hope you're doing okay. He comments that he was in a car accident last night, but he's okay. Goodness. Casey McCool and another bowler on the circuit here. Mike Erickson picks up that spare he wanted last time and Brian Fuller picks up the right wing of that spread eagle bird. And that's why I call getting a bird. And he does what you need to do on that, clean it all up, make a 10. Beautifully done. <laughs> 
Micah Imperato, who is an outstanding live streamer, mentions that he told Rob Linehan to smack Mike Erickson so that that last pin would fall. Apparently he did, and it fell for him. Chris Parkinson on the right, and Parkinson's on a fill, and punches out a half whistle left with John Winchell on the right. On the left, scoreboard on the right. And he's on the head pin, and he gets a better fill. And that's nine. Now Parkinson yep. shooting at the half Worcester. And he's a little full on the head pin. He gets eight of them. He gets the other six down to make eight so far. Uh, Winchell's got a pretty good spare leave here, and uh, no doubt about that one. So rock solid technique. Yeah, that, that wood was pretty straightforward. And another big half working with three marks, two nine fills. He's getting ahead of Chris right now. <laughs> Chris looking to close out his fifth box with a 10. And he's got it, so a 54 for Chris Parkinson at the half. And John Winchell, yeah. half, halfway through this game, is at 68 plus a ball. It's a two mark 54 half. Parkinson's not far off. You know, we know if he can put the shots together. Now, bowlers of this caliber, if you've got two marks and you're still in the 50s at the half, they're not happy. That means a couple of fills didn't go your way. Oh, believe me. Yep. And uh, Chris is on my alternate head pin, the six pin, and takes out three, the triangle on the right. That's good to hear, Casey. I'm glad you're doing okay. Mm. And Winchell is on the three pin, and it's a disappointing four fill. Parkinson looking to spare that and put a little too much spin on that one pin. It rolled the other direction instead of coming back to take out the five. Yeah. It's a strange game. Winchell's only on the half head pin half the time, but... Most of those have been after spare fill, so he's getting big count. And Winchell just takes out the one and I think the five. And rescuing head pin misses, but not that time. Nine pin, nine box for Chris Parkinson, so 63 at the six box. He's over par, but he's not going to settle for a hundred and something. Not in this house. Nope. And uh, Winchell has a nine box. For 81 and a score check time. As soon as I yep. zip this up to the top. We go back to the top of the order. And uh, current statistics right now, if I may, Dan, uh, 14 marks to 11 uh, for Maria Subs. Eight, uh, pinning is eight in Harry's All-Stars favor, interestingly, at the current moment. So push-pull there, but the marks are proving the advantageous. But you see, it's three open marks to one uh, for Harry's All-Stars. All right, back up to the top of the order. Oh, that's a head pin. That. That's not a nice lead for a head pin hit. Feast leaving. Two, five, six, eight, nine, ten. There you go. Good call. Cook was on the two pin, and he took out about four of them. Trying to carry the head pin over to the left, and doesn't touch it, but it goes anyway. I think he might have preferred to stay up for the 10. I don't know. Eight box for Brian Feast. Hmm. And an eight box for Jake Cook. Strange Wood. I annotated that Brian Feast leave in my notes is in Terra Bang, a question mark and an exclamation point squished together. An incredulous question. Uh, basically hi, Phil Rye no uh, talk to Craig Holbrook and he's in reserve right now he's all dressed and ready to go but of course anyone is yeah he's he's so far not planning the bowl in maybe in the third game I don't know what their plan is but he's here and you can see you can't see him on the camera actually you can that's his head down in the middle at the bottom of the screen that's <laughs> Craig Holbrook swaying back and forth Craig Holbrook, a Hall of, Hall of Fame bowler. Very well known in the community. Interesting. That uh, right side wood was flat. I can see Cook's reasoning for that. So, back to the action here and Feast with an eight box. Cook looking at trying to pick up a 10 here. And you got to consider the lively sidewalls. That could have gotten the kick off the wall, just not that time. And there's a 10 box. So I was talking to Irby Kafalas yesterday, and he was talking about, you know, being on camera and doing stuff like that. And he had talked to one of the great broadcasters. His name is slipping me be 
from Channel 5. And uh, he covered bowling and um, other sports. Not Don, but someone else. What's that? Not Don, I'm assuming someone yeah, else. Yeah, it might have been. Um, but um, he said that he treated Craig Holbrook and other bowlers of his caliber just like he treated Larry Bird and uh, others of that elk because as far as he was concerned, those guys were at that same level. And even though the, the sport of Candlepin bowling is nowhere near as big of a deal as basketball, in he Candlepin bowling, Craig Holbrook's a pretty big deal. Even though they're also down to earth and you could ask them about their family while you're cheering on this world-class bowling. Yeah, Craig is very down to earth, really nice guy. All right, so back to action, Matt Rich and John Zappi. John Zappi, another well-known name in this, in, in this game. And Matt puts that right through the hole. No spare for Matt Rich on that one. Put the ball on the object pin, but the pin went through the hole between those other two pins, which looks almost impossible, but they're a foot apart. Or about a third of a meter. <laughs> All right, nine box for Matt Rich, and it looks like a nine box for John Zappi. It is. Uh, yep. You see the lead still firmly on Maria's subside for this, but Harry's All-Stars made that run late, and there's still plenty of time to do that again. Remember, mark in hand for them. So Matt Rich right now is ahead of Zappi. And Zappi, first ball, crosses ahead of the head pin. Ooh, wrong way. <laughs> and takes out eight. Matt Rich on the head pin. He's got 8-2, but all right, he's going to have to play that wood and make that carry over to pick up the 7 off of the 6. 7-6 seven, six split, 6-7 six, split, whichever you prefer. Left it short. Uh, Phil Rye asked about Jack Ray and Don Richmond. I, I don't know. I, I'm, I'm not familiar with those guys, which maybe I should be. Oh, Rich puts a great bid on that one. Helicopters a pin over toward the seven, and it just teases him by spinning around in front of the seven, saying, no, I'm not going to hit that pin. I the Nine I saw, box for Zappi. I saw Don Richmond recently. He seems to be doing well. All right, that would settle down for Matt Rich. It looks favorable. Never know. And he's on it. It did not. It. It went off of the lane, but it did not touch the channel, so it's still a fair ball. If it's still in the air, it's still good. But once the ball makes contact right. with the channel, then it becomes uh, a foul, and that ball, that pin won't count. But it did count for Matt. It's trickier to tell with these flat channels. And uh, well, they're, they're flat really down by the the uh, pin uh, deck. But all right, so both bowlers coming up here. Dan Esdale on your left. Brian Mayer, Mayer on the right, both on fills. Mayer fills his spare with an eight, seven ten split. So that puts him at 107 through the sixth box. Dan Esdale is at 71 plus this ball in the sixth box. Puts it in the pocket. And there we go, some late action. More late action. More late action, and that's a strike. Bowling well in the face of Pop bowling to his right. That's a strike for Dan Esdale right on time. And yes. to answer, Brian Mayer spares the 7-10 split. Six straight now, keeping Maria firmly in front. So Esdale closes his six box at 91. He's at 91 plus two balls here, right? Or no, he already he yeah. struck, he struck. Yep, yep, so the seventh box. We're both looking to close that one out. Both open box. As they say in Canada, if you're on a spare strike, it's an open box. And oh, Mayer man. puts nine on his. Puts him at 126 through seven. Mercy, Brian. Esdale. Oh, boy. On the pocket. Oh, he's looking for a double. He Ooh. had a good look at one, and he take, puts eight on his first ball. Now try to put a spare on. He wants that wood to move. Yeah. Wood is in. He's got to come around that wood, I think. I think he's got to get over on that four pin without hitting that wood. That's what he's trying to do, and he touches it, and he gets it. Spare on strike for Dan Esdale, clutch shot. Oh, and, and as he's having an amazing string, Brian Mayer's string is extraordinary. Esdale at 111 in a ball at eight, and 
Brian Mayer. At one, you had it there. I lost it. Uh, one, Brian Mayer, 136 in the ball. All right. Doink. Doink. Tommy Hirsch, good to see you, buddy. I'm here with Greg Goulier. This is Dan Castle. On the Candlepin Bowling Network. All right. Brian Fuller, Jr. Drops seven on his first ball. Mike Erickson on the left is at 56 plus this ball. Really looking for a big fill. Try to catch up. There's a 29 pin deficit. And more late action on this, but just enough to give him a five fill. You call it, that's a six fill? I see a five. Oh! Spare for Fuller. Unbelievable spare. Seven into the four to make that split. So Erickson needs to spare the four horsemen. That's all. He's on it. And a 10 pin. It's just four measly pins. <laughs> Escapes the onslaught of pins coming at it. Oh, it only goes about a third of the time. I know. Looked good, but probably a little full on the head pin. All right, is he going to use the wood or go straight at the pin? There's a little window open for him to go straight at the pin. He's going for the middle for a head pin hit, but the head pin's not there, so this 10 pin stays up. 71 after 7 for Mike Erickson. That's no, fine. It's 81 in a ball for Brian Fuller Jr. That's no, probably fine. It's not like the last string was a dramatic nail biter or anything. <laughs> Every pin counted in that one, that's for sure. Six pin victory for Harry's All Stars for the first lost string. Yeah by Maria Subs. It's very interesting. Maria Subs uh, lost for the first time just now, and the San Jose Sharks won for the first time just last night. NHL action. Sorry, Sharks bros. Oh, there you nowhere. go. Mike's happy with that break, uh, so split became just two. Five on the fill for Fuller. Mm -hmm. And he's threatening to make it another a strike here, but it, no, it's not going to go, so no spare or for uh, for Fuller. Spare for Erickson. Trying to catch up here. That's the way you do it. Wasn't the easiest piece of wood, but played well on the broadside. So we're coming into the fifth bowlers of this group. And uh, on the right, John Winchell. On the left, Chris Parkinson. Winchell's at 81 after six. Parkinson is 63. And there's a big piece of that 29-pin deficit for Harry's All-Stars. Yep. All bowlers are committed now for the rest of the string. Had to substitute it in the first half and not on a mark. And Winchell drops seven to start with. Leaves a 1-8-10. Good courtesy not to throw the ball while the bowler's on the adjacent lane. It's not a written rule, but I wouldn't. I don't want one of Chris Parkinson's go balls going wild and hitting me. <laughs> he throws hard. And there's a strike. I once helped Ali Chad as a lane side uh, cameraman, and that was a nerve-wracking experience. Even though I know they're good bowlers and are never going to throw it my way, but I can't see the ball coming at me if it does. And Winchell goes wide and leaves a head pin. Well, sometimes things come out. I mean, I saw a bowler the other day. I think it, I think it was uh, Billy Shiner, actually. Might, might be wrong on that, but he hit hard on the rack and sent a pin to the left two lanes. Two lanes? Two lanes, not one, two. Ten box for John Winchell. Appreciate that uh, rules update, Tommy. I know they called Matt's ball fair. It may still have been on the deck to some degree. It was definitely heading into the channel, but it did hit a pin before it dropped into the channel. Oh, boy. Parkinson with a double. All right, that's, that's Chris Parkinson. That's what he can do to you. That has just woken up absolutely everyone on Harry's. All right, John Winchell. Trying to spare this double row here. And yeah, nope, nothing's going to take the 10 out. Maybe. Nope. So no spare for John Winchell. Hey, Danny Finn, the commissioner. Glad to see you here. Wish you were here. 
And a 10 box for John Winchell for a 101 after eight boxes. And the score check here, so. We have essentially four marks to one for Maria's sub, so this lead absolutely can swing in their direction now at this stage. Uh, at the risk of making it look like a lingo grid, I don't, it came before Wordle. You see the yellows and then the green for the double strike uh, to indicate that. Oh, and Cook, almost a strike of his own, leaves the kingpin. Hey, Danny, uh, things going good? Uh, Greg and I up here in the booth right now? Hello. And uh, Paul's wandering around. Oh, I can't believe that didn't go. The wood deflected Jake's ball. He did not pick up the five pin. And nice. Wow, Brian Feast does pick up the half Worcester leave. So first ball looked to be in favor of Jake. Second ball was definitely in favor of Brian. It's fair for Brian Feast. And completely a 10 box for Jake Cook in the ninth. Just vaporized by Brian. Fantastic. So that's taken making eggs into omelets, right? Yeah. The way this match is tracking, this could be a single digit string right now. Very easily. Was the last time. This is a good matchup. All these guys know each other too. Bowl against each other in mass many times. In different permutations. Cook off on the two pin. Feist on uh, the fill. Uh, yep, I had the wrong fill. That's well, yeah. The good. good news is he got a seven fill. The bad news is it's a one seven ten is the leave. And Cook punches, hits a head pin a little light and just takes a head and then the nine pin. And Feist went, tried to make that wood work off the head pin and just picked up the ten pin. So Jake now wants to clean his check mark up. He's got the four, five, six, and ten pin. And all gone. Ten box for Jake Cook and an eight box for Brian Feast. Yep, so that might matter. Keeping it close. Pinning is currently a dozen pins in favor of Harry's All-Stars now. Completely different than it was uh, in string one. Well, we still have open double strike on that fifth bowler, Jake, uh, Chris Parkinson. Now this string, Matt Rich has a 30 pin le uh, lead over John Zappi. John Zappi's going to be looking to close that. Matt's trying to keep it bigger. And uh, Maddie puts the ball on the head pin and just a little too fully, at least left with the 2, 4, 7, 6, 10. Rough one. I've shown Matt is only missing one head pin all the string. Zappi on the head pin. Drops eight. He's got the 6 and the 10. So Matt's got the 6 and the 10 and the 3 on the left. That's big for Zappi. He was on a head pin cold streak until that one. Let's see if he can pick it up. Just misses his object. And a 10 pin's gonna go, so right now only the two and the six are left. So an eight box plus, whatever he gets in the next ball. Zappy looking for a spare here. And he goes wide again to the left. They're just short pinning a few, uh, coming up short on a few pins. Not like him much to do that. Rich looking to get a nine or a 10 here, and he'll take a nine. For 115 after nine, he's got a good game going here. Wants to make it better, and Zappi does get it that time. Third fall. Yep. You don't win an Easter Classic like John Zappi without a good pinning skills like that. And Zappi at 86 after nine, <laughs> and Rich at 115. Maddie's looking to try to get into the 130s here with a mark. That's that 20 string competition we hold at Lita Lane's uh, Nashua, New Hampshire, a years long tradition. And for the first time, full house for that event. 20 games in a day. And Rich has a little bit of an opportunity here. He's got a split. One, three, seven. Yeah, nine for 10 on the head pin. That can go. Matt's got a very precise ball. And Zappi off the head pin and leaves the one, three, nine. Yep. They both had a seven drop. Rich is in the 120s now. Uh, doesn't get it. He's going to have to settle for an eight, nine, or 10. Zappi looking for a mark here to close the gap. Which should contain it all. And he gets a head pin, he gets the nine pin, and the three pin does not go. Beg your pardon, I thought the head pin was gonna go into the three there. Obviously, that's the intention. That's what he meant to do, you know. Bit luckless on that hit. And an eight box for Matt Rich for 123 strength. 
in the nine box for John Zappi for a disappointing 95, well below his normal performance. So I was asked here by Scott Henderson if anybody's envisioning a Ryder Cup event with uh, the Can Canadian bowlers versus the American bowlers, the U.S. bowlers. And have you heard of anything like that? Uh, Ryder Cup. Now, is that the match play one where uh, in golf they go hole for hole simply? You win a hole or you lose a hole based on who gets it? I, I couldn't strokes? tell you about golf, but I'm I know what he's sure. looking at is uh, not so much the format of the game, but the Canadian team versus American teams. I mean, having the nations compete, though, this is a pretty nice tournament, too. But that's an interesting thought. Don, Dan Esdale drops nine for his fill. And Brian Mayer drops nine also. There we go. The three spot bowlers heating up again. Picking up right where they left off. Puts Esdale at 120. Meyer at 145. Esdale wants to spare bad. And he gets it. Yes. He's hoping Meyer misses this one, but I bet he gets it, and he does. So match oh, spares yes. in the ninth for Dan Esdale and Brian Mayer. Oh, simply sensational. And we just saw a big uh, round of applause on the Fenway Academy versus Academy Lanes match. Uh, I wish we could cover both of these matches, but we can't. We could see the Academy guys in 11 and 12. Well, I'm enjoying this show, I'll tell you what. Hey, logs for Brian Mayer. Six okay. for Ezzy. All right, so Esdale puts just three on his fill. Oh, was that the moment? I bet you he said a bad word. And uh, Brian Mayer puts nine on his. Again, he hasn't had a single fill lower than eight, and that was once. So as he looking to hit, to spare the half Worcester minus the five pin. So that put Esdale at 133 after nine, Mayer at Meyer at 164. As he puts a big bid on that one, but it's a little too full on the head pin. Don't kick the ball return. I know you want to. So Can Am is yes. and another mark for Mayer. That puts him at 174 plus a ball in the tenth. Yes. As he's having a great game here, but he yes. should be in the 140s, but he's running into the onslaught of Brian Mayer. Well, he's carrying. They're both carrying their teams. They could be proud. Yeah, can be and proud of that. Eight box, 141 for Dan Esdale. Very respectable game. It gets crushed. Esdale look or Mayor looking to break 180 on this game with this good spare fill. Yeah, that's fist bumps all around on the Ryan's Harry's All Stars side. Wearing the Ryan family amusements patch out of Millis. And look at this fill. Seven, eight. He did it. Nine, eight. That gives him a 182 string. Mercy. And and despite, can you imagine bowling a 141 and getting beat by your point, opponent by 41 pins? Yeah, he got shellacked. Unreal. And for those who don't know the full scope of Candlepin, 120s as a pro average is very solid. In this house, of course, it plays a little quicker. And we, But even there, it's not like everyone was throwing 700. Only a couple people did at singles. You know, 130s maybe. Uh, I think it's, 130s is very gettable, but. 120s, you can hold your head high. And Dan Esdale, 141. Ryan Mayer, 182 with two strikes and seven spares. So only one open box. Erickson looking for a big fill here, and he's in the left pocket, but I think he wanted to be in the right pocket. Only put five on his fill for a 96 after eight. Brian Fuller Jr. dropped nine. He's only left with a four pin. Erickson looking to spare this five pin cluster. And off on the left, picks up the five. He's got something falling still. Not enough, and Fuller is all <laughs> over that pin. No problem picking up that single pin that time. That, uh, they're jeering him for the other singles he's missed. He's got that one. Erickson's got a 10. Spare for Fuller. 10 box for Erickson, so Fuller's at 106 plus a ball. Erickson at 96, 10 pins in favor of Maria Subs dropped a few quarters on that tin can we were talking about yesterday, so to speak. But oh yeah, that's a that's a quarter in my old uh, men's team in Natick. Yeah, and ADL quarter. Not how you start, it's how you finish. Oh boy. Ooh. So Erickson half Worcester plus a ten pin, and Steve Reno is watching, and I am so happy to see you here. Your team, if you don't know already, did Big beat fill. the undefeated Maria Subs in the first string. So Steve Reno. Yep. That's not a bug on the score. Well, it's a score bug. 
And it was a buggy score. Yeah, it was. It was. <laughs> All right, Erickson opening it. Still so sad. Tenth. Um, Fuller puts a good bid on that split, and uh, both are open. You were mentioned, Steve, in good good light. And a nine box for Erickson for 105. Fuller looking to pick up the 10. It might be tough. And that's kind of what we expected from that wood. So a nine box for Fuller for a 123 string. Three spares, so very solid. A gainer for the Maria subs. And now we're coming into our fifth bowlers. Now here's the exciting part. Chris Parkinson on your right had a double strike the last time he's up. So he's got a lot of fill here. This first ball fills the first strike. It's a 10 that makes a 30 box in the eight. He's thinking triple. He does it frequently, and if it is, it's going to be slow motion. Look at that nine or eight go, eight go. So eight in the first strike, 18 fill in the first strike. Oh, no, for Winchell, it did not go. It looked like a strike ball. Parkinson looking to sp spare on double strike, and he can't steal it. So nine on the second strike. Yep, now it's a... I didn't say that, Mike. <laughs> <laughs> the lottery ticket didn't come in, so Winchell's unhappy he missed that spare. He's hoping it's not going to hurt in string three, but the string looks very handily in Maria Sub's favor now. All right, Parkinson with a 10 box for a 120 after nine. John Winchell also picks up a 10 box, gives him a 121 after nine. Yep. Good even match between these guys. So Micah Imperato said, I told the team, beat subs, eat subs. You buy lunch for the win. I did not say that. <laughs> Plus, I like the Maria's guys, too. Parkinson, box 10. And uh, gets That's a cast. mathematical winner. Well, Look Maria's. at that. All right. So 8-9. Uh, the six pin doesn't go. Oh, Steve said it. Okay. So Steve said it. I didn't. Thank you, Micah. My wallet thanks you. <laughs> so Winchell drops six. Yep, six. He's got the check mark on the right. Parkinson looking to close out with a mark, and he does. That'll put him at 130 in a ball at the 10, mark, 10, 10 box mark. Winchell will leave it open, as we say in the U.S. I like the Canadian style where if you're on a spare or strike, it's considered an open box. Yeah. And a 10 box for John Winchell for 121. A lot of 10 boxes. Good on him. Uh, there, yeah, there, uh, this pinning is great. He's a, he's a great bowler. He's Hall of Fame eligible. And then you may well see him there soon. Parkinson on a fill. He's at 130 with a possible 140 game. This time the... If he gets a 140, it'll be a winner. Yeah, double strike, three spares. Clutch. Ball is on the head pin full, six fill for a 136 string huh. for Chris Parkinson. Correct and um, let's look at the results here. So Maria Subs does come back to win the second string. 12.03 to, or, uh, I'm sorry, 627 to 605. Greg, run down the scores. Yep, 605 is correct. Uh, yeah, that, how about that battle in position three? My goodness, Dan Esdale making his world's debut, 141 in front of our cameras. And Brian Mayer, 182, torching that. With, it's not strictly head-to-head, -head, of course, but two strikes, seven spares. He's got 11 on the day and working a 283 uh, two-string total at the moment. Here we go. Jake Cook and Brian Feast. Hold, hold Burton. Uh, oh, all right, so Aaron Spiller coming in for John Zappi on the Maria's team, and I see Craig Holbrook coming up there, and I don't know if he's planning a bowl or not. All right, Jake Cook started with an eight drop. He had a 7-10 split and uh, did not pick up a spare, and uh, we're looking at... I 
Okay, so a six box on the right, a nine box for Jake Cook. Okay, scoreboard please. Coming up. Uh, yoink. There we go. So Feast with a six box to start. These bowlers at this level don't like to do that, so. Okay, Paul. Sorry. Oh, the action here. There we go. Eight okay, pins go. now standing. Jake Cook has a split. Three, six, seven. Okay. And Feast with a five, seven split to shoot at. And despair. Nicely done. You don't see a sheet? All right, that's okay. We'll work without it for the time being. And no spare for Jake Cook. Sent some stuff yep. flying around there. Did not go. So I think I caught Aaron Spiller coming in. Yep, Aaron Spiller coming in. Was for there John one more? Zappi. Uh, no, but I, I see. I, I'm wondering. I guess we haven't been told this yet. Uh, Paul was talking to Sean Baker, who's on this team as well. So this is Aaron Spiller coming up, subbing for John Zappi as the second bowler against Jake Cook or Matt Rich. Matt Rich. Yep. Now I, I'm just curious if we're going to get to see Craig Holbrook bowl. His right. name is not on the board at the moment. No, nope. he's he's up there though. He's cheering his team on, trying to limit the losses to one game. The team camaraderie is everything. These teams are tight knit. Makes this long week, long grind here in Moncton very enjoyable. As does the hospitality here at Bear Lanes. And I know the guys on Harry's All Stars, at least some of them, if not all of them have a house they're running together. And uh, Aaron Spiller's first ball in this match is an eight drop, and he has a five and a dime. And Matt Rich, nice nine drop, just the eight pin. And uh, wide to the left for Spiller. And a spare for Matt Rich. Nice way to start this string. Sean Breton, hello. And an eight box for Aaron Spiller. And we don't have stats on Aaron right now. I know Paul is seeking the sheet if it was completed. So what we do, what Paul does here is when he covers a match, and a lot of guys who are bowlers probably have experiences, um, he does have a, work, a worksheet for the bowlers to fill out that helps us a lot know the bowlers a little better um, in terms of averages, you know, numerical. And, Oh, I, I guess you would call it what I call in my business sometimes facts and feelings. So your statistics as well as things that are important to you, like where you're from. And Matt Rich puts strike on spare. That fact's got to feel good. Aaron Spiller looking to spare the one, two, seven. And everything but the head pin. So the head pin still standing after two balls. Craig Holbrook is itching the ball. And a 10 box for Aaron Spiller to start. He's stretching with the possibility. Remember, you have to substitute before the halfway mark and halfway in the string and not on a mark. So what you're telling me is they want some bowler to have a 10 or less in the fourth box. Yep, well, if you're filling a mark, you can't be swapped out for someone else to fill that mark. Sometimes I wish. So <laughs> Matt Rich showed us a exactly. spare and a strike. Great start. No easy now way out, Dan. Dan Esdale versus Mayer. Brian Mayer. Esdale in the pocket on the right. Drop seven. He's got the two, four, and six pin. Esdale on 256 for two. And uh, Mayer just clips that object pin. Esdale trying to get the split to go and little, little full. Nothing comes off the wall, nothing goes to the pin, so both are open in their first boxes, and or spareless, as we might call it in Canada. I don't know what they call it when you don't get a spare. Nine box for Mayor, nine box for Dan Esdale. What a great place this is. This is like Candlepin at the purest, 36 lanes. And mm -hmm. immaculate. Yeah, it's old, it's old fashioned, but new and fresh as well. It's both. Yeah, you've got... You know, traditional wood lanes here, manual scoring. 
annual resets. And uh, look at this. This is all the action. We're covering one match. We can only cover one match at a time. There's not all of, you know, 12 of us to do these things. But there's the academy team. And you see Justin Waters. I see Charlie Collins there. I see Mike Michichi. And uh, we'll try to cover them too soon. As well as more of the Canadian teams. We definitely want to see a lot from the Canadian teams. We don't see them in the U.S. We'd like to see them in the U.S. And I know they'd like to see some more live streaming of, of their matches. So thank you for the uh, thumbs up, Steve. Hey, Fernando Kacharna is on. Good to see you, Fernando. Now we've seen both Kacharna brothers. We saw a little, little bit ago, and now we see Fernando. All right, eight box for Brian Mayer. And uh, eight box with slow falling pins for Dan Esdale. So good deal. I'll be out. You meet me for a second so I can reach down and grab a drink. Uh, yeah, no, I got you. No, can you reach that? What the, your arms are longer than what I the am. What the coke or what? Yeah, that sounds good. Yeah, I got you. My, my voice is doing okay. Good. Yeah, I mean, singles was frantic. Like, first of all, we get here late on Sunday. Some of the teams were hike, uh, hiking up a little earlier than that. I think someone left at 2 a.m. for some reason. I'm not sure why you'd... I don't know why you take the red eye and hit to Moncton, but... We'll change these names to uh, Mike Erickson and Brian Fuller Jr. for you. So I was a little concerned myself coming up here, having had a bad sore throat for a couple of weeks. I got cleared by the doctor and everything. Yeah, same. No strep, no COVID, no nothing, but just a literally same. Just a bad sore throat, and I'm holding up. I'm doing okay. Anybody who's concerned. So um, we see Brian Fuller Jr. dropped eight, and he has the two and the ten. Mike Harris has a nice, thing. nice pick up there. He, you hit that object perfectly, sent the wood over, makes a spare in the first box for Brian Fuller Jr. Mike Erickson hoping to match that on the one-two, and uh, didn't get any luck on that. He, he missed it, the, did not get a backdoor shot, so he's got to settle for a ten at best. The thing is, Brian Fuller Jr. is 242 through two, and we ballyhooed his spare making, but he's been doing pretty solid, and it's amazing to think he could be absolutely as high as. Uh, second or third highest score on the group if he put those second balls in as well. And there's an eight box for Mike Erickson. He's got a ball coming back and Craig Holbrook is going to go down and get it for him. Like I said, we had a great conversation yesterday with Craig and um, you know, my, my um, One of his teammates is out. I'm trying to recall the name. He's well known. It's just me. That's not anything. But um, we talked about bowling, and um, he offered to watch some of my videos to help give me pointers. That's how nice of a guy John is, or Craig is, because I'm uh, pretty low ranking in our standings overall. So. Okay, Fuller puts six on that fill. I, I see five. Yeah, I think you're five. Let's see if that eight pin is there. Yeah, it is. Hard to see. Now it's not. Oh, boy. And it uh, doesn't pick up the ten, but he put a pin right next to it. If it had moved like half an inch, that would have been a spare. So Erickson looking for a spare here on the two, four, seven. Hmm. Red line's like horizontal in front of it all. Interesting. I think that goes. Risk of the seven standing and not anymore. Right spare side. Spare for Erickson. Great shot. Right side spin to win. And a nine box for Brian Fuller Jr. So early on, we have a little bit of an advantage for Harry's All-Stars, and we are tight on total with a seven pin advantage to Maria Subs after just two boxes for their first two bowlers. Or uh, four bowlers. It's uh, early, early, early. So now we get to see two of the hottest bowlers around, John Winchell on the right and Chris Parkinson on the left. Parkinson thrilled us at the end with that double strike. They put in clutch in the uh, end of the last string, but it wasn't enough to win the string. So Winchell drops eight. He's got the one and the three. Parkinson took down four pins. 
Windchill on this. And, oh, it's actually a seven drop. All right, Paul would like the microphone. Let me pass that microphone so to you. I'm, for I'm worried. Parkinson's open. And uh, looking for a 10 box. And he has a nine box. So Parkinson starts with a nine and Winchell with a spare. Go ahead, Paul. Uh, we got some updates here, folks. The other 11 matches here. Paul Grant at Moncton, New Brunswick, Canada, Fairlanes 2023 ICC Men's Championships, day two, concluding Saturday. Lucky Strike in Massachusetts team tied two points apiece. Lucky Strike hanging on to a 22 pin lead. Going into the final string, these are through two strings completed. TBD, Bolarama, and Able Construction. It's Able Construction, four points to none, up 116 after two. Billy Gillis, who did not bowl the first string, off the bench, 153 second. Same thing yesterday, bowled a 145 in the second string. Team USA, Aaron Fontaine's 141. They're up on, they're tied now with unbelievable lanes. Unbelievable, lost the first, won the second. It's 2-2. Team USA up by 17. Outlaw rides, MCW, up four points to none on 2.64 by 71. Adam Melanson had a 141. Central Park Lanes, Avon Valley Lanes, Avon Valley up 4 nothing, And they're up in the match right now by 32. Other action, Fenway Academy up 4 nothing over defending champs Academy Lanes by 110. Oakland Park, 2-2 two -two at Spikes Chimney Services, who we'll see next. 573, 554, Spikes Chimney Services up 19. Bolarama and Prosperity U. That's Bolarama Bears Road. They're tied two apiece. Prosperity U up by six. Chris Drover at a 155 last string. New England flooring. Mike Saloni gets a 155. They're up 4-0. New England flooring over Kingswood Bulletproof by 33 going to the last string. We'll see Kingsbury Bulletproof our last match today on camera from Bowling Network. A couple of more, Bowling Ball Mafia, four nothing over Stars and Strikes. They're up by 78. In the second string, Matt Hoppe, 159. Jeff Lapia, 157, the same team. The last one, the Hatchman, 2-2 two -two with A plus accounting, but a A8 a a a plus accounting up 98 in the match. With one string left, Matt LeBlanc at a 171 in the first. That's it, guys. 171, Thank you, huh? Paul. Great update. And in the meantime, we just saw Jake Cook hit a spare on his third box. And Brian Feist with a 10 box. Brian Feast, I'm sorry. And, Paul, for your Cook education, Brian Mayer, 182 just now. Yeah, it's 2-2 here. Maria's has lost the first two match points. It's 2-2. Maria's lost the first two match points in string one. All right, on his fill, Jake Cook putting a 9 on that. Feast put it through the hole and took out four. Peter Penny, my teammate, good to see you here. Peter Penny bowls with me on the once a month league at Millis along with Harry's All Stars team member Rob Linehan, Steve Reno, and in addition to that, Mike Smith is a teammate of ours. All right, so Jake Cook with a nine box. And Brian Fe Feast. All right, those are those with, a, with an eight box. Pin that out well. Feast so is having to grind for those. These guys sit down after their fourth box. Jake Cook is a 46. And uh, Brian Feast at 42. All right, so now we come up. Matt Rich on your right on lane 14. He's been hot in the last string and a half or so, and uh, he put a strike in his second. Strike on spare, yep. so he's a 30 plus two balls. Two thirty. Aaron Spiller is at 18. 232 through two for Matt Rich. Yeah, three marks to none standing for Harry's All-Stars. He puts that one just out of the pocket onto the three pin, but he's got another ball to fill this. Feast. Four horsemen left, six drop. All right, Matt looking to fill this. Dan Estill's and his teammates are there supporting him. And everything but the one in the 10, so a respectable eight fill on that strike. Feast bid, a, uh, bid on the four horsemen, it didn't go. Thank you, Peter, appreciate the compliments. And Matt Rich with a 10 box. He's perfect so far through this game. All in for Candlepin. 
people aren't familiar with Candleton, when we say they have a perfect game, that means all tens or better in every box. We don't expect anybody to ever get all strikes. If it happens, it'll be on Sienna. Yeah. <laughs> Pins fly here in Moncton, but don't be ridiculous. <laughs> so uh, we are on the can. This is Dan Castle. I'm here with Greg Gouliar and Paul Grant. And Paul is out on the floor right now. And um, we're with Canopin Bowling Network here in Moncton, uh, New Brunswick, Canada, covering the World's Championship Canopin Teams event. And please subscribe and like on our Facebook page and on the YouTube page, Canopin Bowling Network. Matt Rich, first ball, drops five. And Aaron Spiller, who came in to sub for John Zappi, dropped eight. Can I see your phone for a sec? I'm just curious. Well, if I've got 150, that's got uh, 50 on the chat or on the CBN? Uh, this is on, uh, oh, yeah, um, I, I couldn't tell you off the top of my head. I think this is a Facebook feed I'm looking at. Spare for Aaron Spiller. I just got notified of it, yeah. so I just clicked on the notification. Honestly, love to share it through Facebook, but I think uh, YouTube's got the higher video quality. So wherever you want to watch, though, Candlepin Bowling Network on Facebook and YouTube. We're in both spots. Yeah, this like is a follow Facebook. On Facebook. Like and follow on Facebook and subscribe on YouTube so that you're always in the know about all our matches, including all the ones coming up this week. We start 9 a.m. Atlantic every day. That's 8 a.m. Eastern. And uh, back from there if you're in the United States or forward from there elsewhere. All right, Dan Estelle in his first ball. Drops eight, and the six and the nine are left. And Aaron Spiller, or no, I'm sorry. That's Brian Mayer. Brian Mayer. I'm still in the last set. Took out five, four horsemen, and the eight pin, and we call it the Kaliri for in honor of Bob Kaliri. Yeah, Mayer's got a 180 tangover right now. No head pins just yet. There we go. It's fair for Dan Esdale. So I'm reading the comments on the Facebook feed. Right now I'm not looking at the YouTube feed. So if generally, anybody's commenting over kind there, I, I apologize. I'm really not ignoring you. I just have my cell phone here looking at the other ones. I'm taking a peek, but I'm also heckin' busy. But we appreciate you all. If we look too much at the comments, sometimes we miss the action, and that screws up our scoreboard. But we're there. We're, we're going to follow you. A lot of familiar names following this feed on Facebook. All right, Dan Esdale on a spare in a fourth box. He's at 27 plus this ball, and that's a pretty good ball. And uh, I don't really Ooh. like that lead. That's the eight and the nine pin. Yeah, the five pin disappeared backwards. Yikes. That's not easy to get the five, eight, nine. But, um, it's even harder to get the eight and nine. So Brian Mayer drops six. He's got a diamond on the right and it's seven pin. He's got to pick up the diamond and hope something carries to that seven. Pin. No wood to play with. Esdale is looking at the wood at the right. He's consulting with his team. He's going to use it. And uh, oh. can you believe that? He kind of capped it, I think. And when he capped it, it took out the pin on the left, the eight pin, the left, the nine pin. Good bid. In the meantime, Mayer hit the diamond, left two pins. So both pillars will have a nine box. So Esdale with an eight fill nine box puts him at 44 after four. And Brian Mayer with 35 after four. It's interesting to see. Do you see any bowlers sitting down? I see a couple. It's possible, but not, not too many. Not many. No, this is mostly standing room only. The bowlers are st all standing. There's seats down there for them, but they're not making use of that. They're they're really really wound. All right, Mike Erickson. He's on a spare. He had 18 after two plus that ball, and that ball is left side out. All right, and in the meantime, Brian Fuller Jr. dropped nine and had a wiggly five pin. So I think that's a four fill. Yes. And oh. uh, he hit his object. Come on, push. It's not pushing. And uh, Fuller 
<laughs> oh, that was close. That was close, but he picked it up. Well, the wood can be a, really your friend sometimes, can't it? Just tapped that wood very gently, brushed it as the ball went by, and that was enough to carry the pin. Eight box for Mike Erickson. And that puts him at 34, or 30 after three. Fuller's at 34 plus a ball. At the moment, it appears that Harry's All-Stars has a lead in this game and in total, but it's pretty fragile. So Erickson coming into his fourth box on the right with Brian Fuller Jr. And he's on the three pin and leaves a Cleary, a left-handed Cleary, four horsemen plus a nine pin. And Eric, um, Fuller puts eight on his fill. Has Whoa. a nice, nice leave with a one three pin standing alone. Erickson shooting at the Cleary. And a seven pin falls, but the nine pin does not, so no spare. Oh, Fuller went wide to the left, missed everything. He's not happy with that. And so Harry's maintains so the lead. Right? There we go. So the question is from Jacob Morse. So Jacob Morse, Ooh. is there Total a Denny. link for the lane schedule? And there is. Um, on Facebook and Candlepin Chat, that was posted last night with all the links to the league secretary, which gives you the scores and everything. I'm not sure if that covers the schedule. And look at, oh, not a strike for Chris Parkinson. In the meantime, Ken Redman from California, I remember that. Says that Greg and I have good radio voices. Thanks. Thank you very much. And I've also been told I have a face made for radio. <laughs> <laughs> so that is what it is, you know? You can see our pictures yeah. up on the page. Parkinson didn't get it. Okay, both bowlers will be open in this box. Yep, got everything else on the diamond except the front pin. Interesting. Early predictions on who would win. So, tough call. The Academy team, we have two teams from Academy, Academy and Fenway Academy. Academy team from Massachusetts won last year, so they've got some favorites. This is Maria Subs team, I think they've got their high end of standings. There's two divisions, Division One and Two. What are your thoughts on that, Greg? Uh, the two divisions, left and right. My thoughts on that, you're saying? No, your thoughts on pr early predictions for where we may end up here. Uh, in terms of Harry's and Maria's right now in front of us, I mean, the lead still seems on Harry's side right now. Um, in, term yeah, in terms of the overall tournament, who do, who, who do you think I'm sure they'll make a deep run right now. I don't have the full standings in front of me, but... No, we there, don't. There, unlike, unlike mixed worlds where there seems to be like one or two teams out in front, you just never know these days. And now that we have the last undefeated team defeated, who knows? We have a, we have essentially 24 strong teams here. So, I mean, I think high on the list is the Maria's team and the Academy team particularly. And there's probably a couple of others I can't think of off the top of my head because I don't know them all that well. Yeah. Um, but those stand out to me anyway. And Fenway Academy, I think, has a strong team. I know those guys. Um, yeah, they're doing well against Academy. We heard that update from but Paul. I, I don't mean to leave anybody out there because I, I don't have a good sense for that. I j that's just what I know so far. So well, we'll see how it goes. That's the way sport is. The talent will make itself known in the end. Even if the pins threaten to cause havoc, at least we hope. All right, how do we end up at that? Ha that uh, John Winchell is 47 and a ball, so that smudge needs to go on the board. So actually we see it's two marks to none. And uh, current statistics is it's uh, six marks to six in the string. Oh, boy. So back to the action. Both Feast and Cook. Or should you cook before the Feast? <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, guys. That just occurred to me. Couldn't resist. Uh, both had tough splits to shoot at, and both uh, did not pick up the marks. It's a nice coincidence. We'll allow a little occasional name humor. Hey, my name's Castle. I, I have yeah. been dealing with name humor forever, so I can give some of it back. At least people can say Castle. Grumble, grumble. <laughs> my, 
My name's Goo Yara. My uh, brother-in-law said, oh, Slime Pirate, Goo Yar. <laughs> Goo Yar. <laughs> so there you go. That's pretty creative, actually. In case anyone's tripping on the French. Head but, pin hit. Not enough about me. Head pin hit for John Winchell. Or Brian Feast. All right, come on. Get my head back here. And uh, ends up with the Try Jake Cook. Three, three six, four, oh, seven. Yeah, oh, no, it, no, it is. It Jake is. Cook dropped six, I think. He's got the three on the right, and he's got a sh – no, it was three. Didn't matter. It's a spare anyway. Spares are good no matter how many pins you take down in a spare. You take down ten in a spare. Very good. Nope. Saw that done Saturday by my granddaughter. No mark in the previous one. Doesn't matter. And a nine box for Brian Feast. Jake Cook sits yeah. down on a spare, so he's a 64 and a ball after six. 61 for Brian Feast. And now Matt Rich. Candlepin can be a harsh game, but it's forgiving sometimes. Matt Rich versus Aaron Spiller. Matt Rich sat down at 57 after the fourth box, and Aaron Spiller is at 36 plus this ball. He is on a um, on a uh, spare. So, Greg, uh, where can we find the links to scores and schedules? So he put. Two on the fill, it looks like. Matt I'd say three. Yeah. A pin somehow went out as well. Great yeah, hit. That, that's, that's weird. Uh, Matt dropped eight. He's got a nice lead there with a four seven. Don't want to predict, but to me it looks good. That wood looks favorable. I agree. And there we go. There's a spare for Aaron Spiller following the previous spare with the three fill. Yeah. That's so one that of those times where you wish he had more on the previous one, but that's a, a good way to make up for it. And Matt. Leaves no doubt about that one. That's a spare in the sixth for Matt Rich. Great in the fifth. half. Great half. 67 and a ball at the half for Matt Rich. 49 and a ball at the half for Aaron Spiller. Spare strike, 10 9 spare. Yep. Okay, thank you, Micah Imperato. Always on the Johnny on the spot with stuff like that and very much appreciated. Micah is very proficient technically and a great bowler and a big help with the eight America, uh, Atlantic Candleton singles tour for keeping all of our statistics and scores way beyond anything we've been able to do before and when Micah produces a, a match or calls a match himself he has some of the best camera work of anybody out there with pin cams and everything so he's bringing it to the next level for us appreciate it Spiller Eight Ooh. on the first ball. Matt Rich misses a spare effort. Both of them miss their spares. Rich is shooting at the four horsemen right. Okay, what do we have there? Next match. All right, 10 box for Aaron Spiller. Thank you, Dan. Matt Rich looking for a matching 10, and he gets a nine. And nothing wrong with that. Puts him at 82 after six. Keep an eye on Spillers that total. Spillers at 65 after six. Yep. Keep an eye on that total, Dan. It's getting close already. Two pin total advantage for Harry's All-Stars. So to remind everybody, if we didn't already, the teams are playing three game matches, head to head scratch. Two pins, two points are awarded for, total, for uh, playoff standings for each game one and two points for total of possible eight points. So far they've split two and two here. And I know Harry's, I don't have their current standings in front of me, but um, you can look them up, up, up in league secretary, but Maria's played three matches yesterday and picked up all the points. And a spare for Mayor. Esdale is on the six, seven, 10 split with Wood. He's gonna play the middle Wood, no. Well, look at that, ball comes back. It's a curling shot. I got told that by Ian McGregor yesterday that in Canada, when that ball goes back and forth and back and forth, it's like in curling. Big sport up here in Canada. Should be bigger elsewhere, but hey, the United States won gold. We can be proud of that. There you go. Well, I don't think he's carrying a broom, so I don't yeah. think he's going to sweep the ice in yeah. front of the ball to get it to move anymore. I'm not sure that would be legal anyway. You finally came through, Schuster. Proud of you. Uh, Brian Fuller. Is that Brian Fuller? No, that's not. I'm sorry. Uh, that was Johnny. John Winchell. Yeah. Sorry, John. Sorry, Brian. 
Thanks for liking all my test videos, John. All right, and a nine box for Dan Estale for Ezzy. So 45 and a ball for Brian Mayer. Thank you, Scott, for season schedule. So <laughs> this is being run on the computer by for score reporting, et cetera. You can see everything just like a league is done on league secretary, although it's like a whole season of a league in a week. And a strike for Mayer, a strike on spare. Esdale trying to match. Just off the head pin, he's got some late action coming up. And the 6'10 stay up, but there's some wood there that may be very helpful to making this fair. Brian Mayer waking up. Big time, he's still got a chance at the 400 here. He's, if he whiffs the strike till he could still pin out 388. Esdale picks up the spare in the six. 63 and a ball. For Dan Esdale, 65 and two balls for Brian Mayer. Yeah, in the second here, two marks to two. Remember those yellow blips on between total and game. Tell you how many marks are up on each side. Still to fill. Okay. So a mark in the first bowler, mark in the third bowler for Harry's All Stars. A third mm -hmm. and a fifth for Marius. That's it. So Fuller drops eight on his first ball, and something going to happen here. And look at that. It's thinking about it. Oh, Erickson, powerful ball. Trying to break up that 4 Boy. 6 split. All right. Um, Fuller's got a fairly decent leave and no problem there for a spare for him. Erickson has to shoot at the 4 6. He's got Wood into play. I think he's going to go to the left. I'm not sure. Yeah. I almost wishes he would rather he cut it way to the left. Look out. Too far. Ended up in a channel, so he's got an open box. A lot of pit. A lot of ball action there. I was worried it was going to foul a few pins away, but no, no. Pick a stick now. He's going to take the right-hand side and not mess with that wood next to the wall. And a nine box for Mike Erickson. Good prudence. You don't want to waste pins. You're not sure you can get the 10. Get as many as you can. Don't, don't be messing around. Trying, yeah. to, trying to make a circus shot to get a 10 when you may very well yeah. lose both of them. It was a... It was an air thing. Maria's had 15 pins uh, in pinning on the first string, but Harry's held on anyway. Nine fill for Brian Fuller Jr. Big time. That puts him at 69 after four. At five, 69 for a half, 49 half for Erickson. Yikes. Oh, that, you know, his face says it all there, doesn't it? Come on, it wasn't that bad. I wasn't like far off the head, but no, Brian. Uh, well, well, Erickson gets a break himself no. there by Fuller Jr. not getting a spare there. So he's got everything but the two pin to shoot at. He hit the two and just the two chipped off. So throw uh, your strike ball, see if it works. He's off the head pin. Don't let the frustration get to you when that happens. Nine box for Fuller. Erickson looking to try to get as much out of this one, five, four, seven, eight combination as he can. This is tricky. Any temptation to go left? Yeah. yeah. Yeah, I can see that wood was so perilous right there. I mean, if you get it to work, of course, you get the whole cluster, but. Well, that was costly. That was a six box for Erickson, and I'm sure some bad words were involved. <laughs> Oftentimes, it's just like a disciplined tactic, like, yeah, there's a safe cluster there, but that was not as obvious uh, whether to avoid the wood or not, and uh, there's absolutely a reasoning to go for the aggressive out on that. Well, that shifted the lead now to Maria Subs at the at the coming into the fifth box yes. for our anchor bowlers. Winchell is 47 plus a ball. And, well, that's as good of a fill as you can put on a spare. Oh, big. It's a 10 fill strike in the fifth for John Winchell. So that puts him at 67 plus two balls. Yeah, you got Mayer going big. Fuller with the nine drop. Winchell strike on spare. Maria's going big now. With the roster they have, I'd say that's not an unlikely outcome. But the guys on Harry's side are pretty good themselves. So Chris Parkinson, clutch bowler. He's in there, and the 10 pin refuses to fall. That was a good bid by Chris Parkinson. 
I don't think he could have thrown it much better than that. There's nothing wrong with anything the bowler did there, but now he's got the 10 pin. He wants that wood to get out of the way. Give him a 10 box ch attempt. What was the lead on the first ball? I'm sorry, I was, I was sneezing over here. Uh, he took out three and a 10 box for Chris Parkinson. So he took- Away from the head pin. Uh, yeah. yeah. Yep, he was over on the four and took out that triangle and then he had the double roll. Yeah, well that seven pin cluster. And we just saw, I believe, Justin Waters drop a strike in, on lane 12. Justin Waters also bowls out of Millis. He's on the academy team. We'll hopefully be covering him soon. We saw him in his singles. Winchell, first ball on a strike is a five. Parkinson trying to get his own strike. Picks up six, and he has a two, four. Yeah, it's four, says goodbye. Going to take a nap. <laughs> And uh, the two six ten is left, so seven on his first ball. Well, Winchell trying John. to pick up the split and just gets one, so six on the strike. I tried to warn him. Uh, and a discussion. What is in front of the? What is in front of the two? Red line will take that. Can he get the ball to trampoline over? There's a horizontal piece of wood that might block the ball deflection. Left side, pinwheels the right side wood forward and didn't take out the 6-10. Okay, no spare. Winchell trying to clean up this six pin, four pin mess and just gets one. So a seven box for John Winchell. Mm. That's Winchell half a Marshall had a 73 half, Parkinson a 56 half and Parkinson does pick up the 10. So at the sixth box, where's Parkinson and Winchell? Uh, 60. All right, 66. go ahead, give us the update. That's a good idea. Yeah, might as well do that, I suppose. We'll shoot marks to one. Just checking it over here. Stats are 11 marks to nine in favor of Her uh, Maria Subs, I beg your pardon. And uh, pinning is dead even. 23 pins left standing for each side. Overall in the match, it's uh, three extra marks and seven extra pins for Maria's. All right, we are now Jake Cook on your right, and he was on a spare. He put six on that fill, so he's 70 after six. Got a solid string going, and uh, he will not have a mark. Feist, on the other hand, had a half Worcester plus, I think, the five pin. Don't count it, guarantee that. Correct. And um, he went through the hole again, so opportunity for Jake to pick up some pins here if, when, if uh, Feist can't clean this up. Ooh, but they yes. both got a 10. 10 bucks for both bowlers. That mattered. So Jake's not on a spare, by the way. Uh, correct. Okay, thank you. Uh, yep, only one mark left on each side. Hey, James Humes. At figures, it's from the three spot bowlers. I thought you'd like to see this match. James Humes is a Atlanta Candleton Singles Tour bowler. That's and he's watching and uh, knows a lot of these people too. And a strike for Cook. And Feist trying to match it, and the five and the ten stay up. He's got a lot of wood there, three pieces up. So one could deflect him. I think the one by the five might work. He's got the slant, and now we have another curling shot. Yeah. Pieces and misses of head pins, but also not getting love when he does connect. Oh, it, it's – there it goes. Oh. It went. Oh, the rolling ball did take it. Coming back for the fourth return. It bumps against a 10 pin, and that's something you ha, ha. only see here. Well, the ball went back and forth, what, three times, and it came back and touched the 10 pin for and a spare. And fooey on me, I was the promotion yesterday saying like, oh, the rolling ball never takes it. Oh, why are we waiting? What's the point? Maybe when it goes to like one mile an hour, but no, no, that had plenty of time. You wait for that ball. Don't push the ball button until everything stops, and that paid off. Yeah. Don't turn that red light on too soon. We'll see it. We'll hear about it. And All the right. world will know. All right, Matt Rich off on the three pin. Aaron Spiller. I think Paul might have an update. Does not. Ooh. All right, nine drop by Spiller. Threatened to make a strike. Matt Rich put out four in his first one. He's got the four horsemen plus the five and the eight. Yeah, right side out. And nothing doing, no spare there. The f I want to say the head pin six, four, and seven are left. Spiller's just looking at the five pin, I think, or is that the head pin? 
target. That's so. just a head pin. He's All right. Uh, everything but the head pin went. Took out everything else. And it's still there. Good break for the Harry's All-Stars team. Uh, I guess we don't have the head pin range. Matt tries to get two. He gets one. Eight box for Matt Rich. And that head pin. No, nope, there it goes. No, it doesn't go. So the head pin stays up, and Bob Lee has been proposing a rules change that if you leave the head pin up after three balls, you'll lose two pins. <laughs> I don't think that's going to go anywhere. But it's uh, a, I, I had a it theory feels like, oh, you'll lose the third ball. No, I don't think that's a good one either, though. I yeah, think. He it feels he should be penalized for leaving the head pin alone. And I think it's a, it would be a fun rule. but Or you could reward it, you know, uh, frame it positively, you know. You reward the good solid bowling. All right. I actually have many ideas about that, <laughs> I confess, but I'll save that for another time. And Micah says, no, but you're invited to join the missing head pins. I think that's the name of one of his team. All right, Matt Rich drops six on his first ball. He's got the one, uh, three, six, and nice. eight, and they're all gone. Spare for Matt Rich. It puts him at 100 plus a ball after eight. Yep, fourth mark. He's building a string quietly, Matt, but Matt surely. looking good. Matt's not generally loud, but his ball can be. Yeah, spare, st spare strike, that was the big one to start off, and then a spare six, and then spare now. Fun guy to, to bowl with and to work with is Matt Rich. And Aaron Spiller ends up with a nine box for 83 after eight. All right, so it's a tight one, guys. Winner of this game will probably take six. But that may not be the case, but that I think is a likely situation. There is a little bit of a total deficit on the Harry side. All right, now we have our number three bowlers coming up. Dan Esdale from Harry's on the right. Brian Mayer on the left. Brian Mayer's on a strike. Esdale's on a spare. They're very close in score right now, 63 and 65, plus two balls for Mayer, plus one ball for Esdale. And we get some cheering from Mayer here from Great Bar Bearded Arms. Appreciate that. Do you have the YouTube feed coming in for comments? I don't want to miss anybody. Let me see. Dan Esdale on a fill. Puts it on a head pin and he gets seven. So a seven fill for Dan Esdale. Mayer on his first ball on a fill. Looking for a double and he drops seven on his first. Opposite looking leaves. Esdale with the two, four, ten, no wood. Mayer with the three, six, ten. No, it's three, six, seven, no wood. As, as Dale misses his spare attempt, so does Mayer. Mayer ends up with eight on his strike. Mayer's and ball is oozing with spin. And uh, as Dale with an eight box. Mayer with an eight box. Matching eight boxes for our bowlers. They keep it close. 81 after seven for Mayer, 78 for after seven for Esdale. Uh, Sherry, Scott, Harry, Jack. John Nichols, Paul, Jacob, Scott, Anthony. All right, Esdale on the right, box eight. He's on the three pin. I'll set this one here. He's a one, two, seven, or one, two, ten, sorry. I'm reversing things. Oh, nice head pin hit by Brian Mary there, but a little too full, and he ends up with the four, seven, ten split, but he's got a lot of wood to kick around, bounce off the wall, dance over to the left, right side, see what it does. Esdale's probably playing this without wood. Or the one, two, ten, and he yes. gets it. Nicely done, Dan Esdale. We had, a, we had a fun match not too long ago. We had a ACST doubleheader match, and it involved Dan Esdale, Dan Castle, Dan Finn, and Dan Gothier. But 10 box for Mayer. Good and all, an all Dan match. Brian Mayer needs one more mark for 400. And Steve Reno sends Dan es Esdale an attaboy. Well deserved. That was a clutch shot. Erickson on the right. He's down to Fuller Jr. by 23 pins at the moment. He's looking to 
decrease that deficit. He's at 55 after six. Fuller's at 78 after six. Yeah. String is tightening up big here. You see the extra marks for Harry's. Oh, there's a break for Erickson. It looked Ooh. like it was going to be a spread eagle, and instead it ends up being a seven drop. And Erickson dodged a bullet there. If his Fuller dropped nine and left the four pin, Fuller's only got the single pin to go for. Erickson has three, but he's got a snowplow in front of that line. We've seen this situation. And it works. Spare for Erickson. Mark stacking now for Harry Fuller now. Fuller looking for a single pin spare. He picks it up clean. Doesn't need any wood. Who needs wood? Man, he's still getting the mock. Cheers. Matching marks for our bowlers, and that puts Fuller at 88 plus a ball, and Erickson at 65 plus a ball. I was going to drop the subject, but they keep on <laughs> doing what? it to him. They keep on jeering Brian. So both bowlers on the fill. Erickson trying to get a big fill here and maybe another. Okay, he's on the three pin, but he's got some big six. Slow late action, and he takes six in his fill. And Fuller Jr. only he has wins. four on his fill, though he hit the head pin. So Erickson is shooting at the one, four, seven, eight. Wood in between. That's big for Harry's to gain those couple pins despite the head pin miss. Yeah, they gained a couple there. Looking for a spare shot, and he gets it. That eight pin being the last to fall, gets hit by a piece of wood coming off the wall. Not to be denied, Whoa. but unfortunately he is, is Brian Fuller. Woods. And he, what a great bid on that. Looked like it was gonna go, but nothing touched that five pin. Wood just behind it. Well, the ball touched at that time, so a 10 box for Fuller Jr. for 102 after eight. Erickson is at 81 plus a ball, bringing him a little closer. Either anchor bowler could also go 400 as we see them here, but they'd have to stack a few marks up uh, three by my count. I've seen both of them put marks up <laughs> in a row. Yeah, especially as the match tightens up, we could see them flourish. Chris Parkinson on your right, he's at 66 after six. John Winchell on your left, he's at 80 after six. Parkinson's ball. There's a strike. Looked a little full, but it went. He gets a lot of clutch strikes. He's got a powerful ball. Right on cue. All the marks up for Harry's. So that puts Parkinson at 76 plus two. Here comes Winchell for his answer. And he is off on the two, and he ends up with a four horseman plus the seven pin. Post. Spare this. This is sparable. Yeah. If anything, the wood might stymie it. He plays the pocket. That's where I think you need to play it. But a little full on the head pin and only two go. Four, seven, six, seven, ten left. Tough one. Yeah. Yeah, now total is on the table, too. And an eight box for John Winchell, 88 after seven. Parkinson's at 76 plus two balls. He has the opportunity to get the advantage over Winchell here. Yeah, total's absolutely on the table now. I think actually the string is the easier one for Harry's, but plenty of time for that to change. Well, Maria's is up 10, but I don't know that that, I don't think that includes the marks. So Parkinson first fill ball. And that's eight in a fill, two wiggly pins. Winchell, look at that. They're still going, so he drops eight. He's left with a two and a seven. Parkinson wants that wood to move into a better position. And we need a, we need a huddle here, because that wood might be out. And so somebody from the other team needs to go check, so Sean Baker. We haven't seen Sean Bowl yet. He's one of the greats of the game. He's going yep. up to check the wood. Frequently unlucky strikes team in his uh, won championships with them, but now Maria's picks him up. I had a good conversation with Sean earlier too. He gave me a good rundown of the team. And uh, their plan to do minimal substitutions. At least so far that's held true with only one. All the teams have anywhere from six, eight people on them and gives everybody a chance. And a spare on strike for Parkinson. That's its 20 box. So that puts him ahead of Winchell. 
96 to 88. Winchell looking to spark, hit a spare here too, and he does. So Winchell's at 98 in a ball, Parkinson at 96 in a ball, so Winchell's still ahead. And tell us where we stand here as we come into boxes nine and 10 to finish out this 16 great mark, match. 16 marks to 14, two pins only, and uh, the pinning is only two in Harry All-Star's favor. But that's just enough to keep the string well, level at the moment, of course, with their three extra marks. Expect total to be in play, and we'll watch out for any of Parkinson, Winchell, uh, Parkinson is, uh, is no, any of Parkinson, Winchell, or Cook. Mayer to go 400. All right, and Cook is on a strike, and he makes double. Whoa. It's good time for that. Double strike for Jay Cook. Feist was on a fill. Feast, I'm sorry. That's it. And uh, I believe he only put a couple on that fill. Just a, just a second, Paul. I need to score check something. And then and uh, ends up with a seven box. So his fill, I believe, was two. Did you get that? Uh, yep, in the box is seven. You're absolutely right. And uh, may we turn it over to Paul at this point? All right, uh, but I may interject because Jake Cook is on a tr double right yeah. now. We're on a, uh, actually, do you mind if we actually take a look out at uh, Jake Cook first? He's on a double strike right now at a big point in this match. And it could possibly tip the scale completely in Harry All-Star's favor. Feast puts six on his fill, gives him 96 at the ninth box. For the sp uh, triple attempt, the middle, not going to happen. No. He, he lemon drops to the right. Oh, gosh. All right, so an 11 in his first strike. And uh, no, no spare for Feast. Cook looking to get a big ball out of here. And that's pretty big ball, eight on the second strike. Eight on the second strike. All right, one, one more ball for each, and then Paul will jump in. Yeah, yeah. Oh, don't worry, we're all on that. It's not a double strike. Is there a rule for that? Oh, no. And 10 box for Feast for 100 after 9. And Cook looking to get one or two pins here. And how about one? So a 9 box for Jake Cook on that. He's at 128 to finish. 100 for Feast. <laughs> And Paul Grant's got a quick update between, Thanks, Dan, between Greg, bowlers. Just an update. Uh, Sean Duthright of Kingswood Bulletproof. We'll see him on a third and final match today. Just threw a 170 third string up against New England Foreign, trying to get two points, maybe four. Other action, Bowling Ball Mafia sweeps 8 nothing over Stars and Strikes, still trying to get their first win, 18-52 to 16-52. That featured a 159 from Matt Huff, the captain, and Jeff Lappy a 157 to second. Jeff Lappy comes back with a 150. 46 in the third, 303 his last two. He ends with a 410. Matt Huff 394. All right, we just saw Matt Rich put nine on his fill, giving him 109 after eight. Aaron Spiller on your right had a good head pin hit, and he has the 367 split and would it may be advantageous here to either come off the wall or deflect the ball over to the seven, or maybe both. And he deflected the pins over, and it just went all in the pit. So no mark for Aaron Spiller. Rich is shooting at the eight pin solo. And he picks it up, goes right by that wood. I think if he had touched that pin with that ball, he was going to deflect over to the right. So another mark for Matt Rich coming into the 10th box. Mark in the ninth, Matt Rich, 10 box for Aaron Spiller. And right now, Harry's has the edge. It's just a total flood right now. They, everyone's, everyone marked in the eighth box. It could happen again in box nine. Who knows? Okay, Spiller at 93 after nine. Matt Rich at 119 plus a ball. And Micah Imperato mentions that Paul Grant saw that lemon drop. So go tackle Jake Cook for the money. Spiller drops six on his first ball. Matt Rich on his fill ball, only five. So that puts him a 124 after nine. He's got the four horsemen right plus a seven. This ain't the CFL. We're not doing tackling here. <laughs> I saw something the other day, actually. I'll tell you about that. But they may have been goofing around. On the 1, 4, 7, 8, 9 split, Spiller only picks up the 4 and the 7. Matt Rich trying to get another mark, three, make three in a row. He's got a bid on it, just off the head pin. No mark for Matt Rich in a tent. Really emphasizing the spin on that ball. You know, when you bowl next to Matt Rich, you can't hear his ball hit the deck half the time. Another bowler does that is Jeremy Seaholm. Nice and smooth. 
And a nine box for Matt Rich to close out with a 133 to Aaron Spiller's 103. Solid performance by Matt Rich. All right, we're coming up on Dan Esdale and Brian Mayer. And we're going to have another quick update from Paul. Brian Mayer needs a mark for 400. Paul? New England flooring going for an 8 0 sweep. Gets a 7 0 4 in the third string. Ooh. But the team will see next Spikes Chimney Services, 7 0 5. A one pin win. 7 0 5, 7 0 4. What? They get two points. Kingswood Bulletproof next on Canada from Bowling Network. And Mayer goes to the right and drops three as a 1 2 4. At, on a on a fill, Esdale hits the pocket, but I don't know what. Maybe it's a little light. Dan doesn't have a light ball, but it looks like he left uh, one, two, three, four, five, six. I think that's a four fill. I think the nine pin is still up. Yeah, I think you're right. Let's we'll find out in this ball. Yep. And yeah, it was up, but it doesn't matter. It's gone now. So four fill in the sixth, ninth box. And a spare, four fill in the eighth box, a spare in the ninth, and a nine box for Mayer. 100 after nine for Mayer, 102 plus a ball for Dan Esdell. And right now, Harry's All-Stars is taking a solid lead in this match, yeah. in this game. I guess the team that came in Strike three. for Mayer, that may change. 24 and 0, ah, there's your mark, Brian. And Esdale off on the three pin and just takes out four. So that puts him at 106 after nine. Trying to get another clutch spare here for him. He has a one, two, four, seven, five, eight. So a line of four followed by a line of two. Oh, is it gonna go? It's thinking no. Good sticks though at least. You so don't want to lose them now. With a yep, pins are critical in a match like this, or in any match, but this one has been really tight up against a really tough opponent, opponent for both teams. So every pin counts, huh. and Dan Esdale will end up with a nine box for a 115 game. Never got a 10 box, but a solid string. 371 for Dan Esdale. Brian Mayer's <laughs> on 393 and a strike. Ian McGregor mentions while we're waiting for the sweep that Paul Grant will have. Jake Cook chained up for $10 for a lemon drop on a double. <laughs> <laughs> the less we think about that, the better. And an eight on this first fall, 400. <laughs> <laughs> Paul, I let Paul see that comment, he, he appreciates that. He actually has chains in the bag, or at least his bag feels like he's carrying chains. Yep. So. An eight in the fill for Mayer for 118 and 115. Picked up three pins. 401. 401 triple. Jake Cook, 341. Matt Rich, 365. Uh, Brian Feast, 310. Uh, and John Zappi and Aaron Spiller combined for 315. All right. So now we have Brian Fuller Jr. on your right and Mike Erickson on your left. Mike Erickson's 81 plus a ball. He's on a fill. And Fuller is at 102. And he's on a two pin and takes out four. Erickson looking for a big ball here. Try to bring that score up at 81 plus this ball. And uh, six in the fill, not really what he wanted, but not the end of the world either. Brian Fuller Jr. onto the six pin and Look over there in Laney 13. Uh, Erickson had that four pin wiggling that attempted, you, you think it may have come forward and, or taken out a, one or two more, but it didn't. So four horsemen left. Erickson's all over it, so let's put a spare up for him in the ninth. And Fuller with a nine box. So Erickson's at 97 plus a ball. Fuller's at 111 with a strike. Erickson could be within striking distance, no pun intended, for Fuller. All these guys have been putting on quite a show for us. It's a great match. Fuller, first ball on the two pin, takes out five. So now Harry is probable to take at least the string here. I think total also is heavily favored for them. Pending this, oh, oh no. Oh, you didn't want to see that. Lemon drop. 
and Paul Grant is nearby. So there's a lot of jokes being made here at Paul Grant's expense. <laughs> uh, so Scott Henderson, Candlepin has a lot of colorful language, as you've probably gleaned already, and it's a little different between the Americans and the Canadians. So we're kind of trying to do a little bit of both. Erickson, both bowlers are gonna be open in American lingo. I'll, I'll come back to that in about a second. So a 10 box for Fuller. Puts him at 121, 363, pro rights. And Erickson will use the wood to get the 10. The wood didn't take it. So, so Scott, um, some of the scoring um, s uh, methods are slightly different in Canada. Um, lemon drop means that you took out one pin with that ball, typically the four pin or the six pin only. And uh, yeah. Paul, Paul uh, is very, very uh, much been promoting the candle pins for cancer charity. So he hits up the bowlers for a dollar when they do that. And a lot of them voluntarily do it, the lemon yeah. drop fund. After much finger waggling, but it does help a really good cause, candle pins for cancer, which is just a charity for bowler, uh, for bowlers, by bowlers. We all do it. And uh, you'll probably hear if you listen on Paul talk more about candle pins for cancer. Um, you know, pa Paul is a uh, very good at promoting things. I mean, he's very big at that. And um, so Winchell does not get the mark. He put eight on his fill. Parkinson put five on his, and both bowlers miss their spares. So right now, I think Harry's is really well in the driver's seat here. Yep, pretty much. But 10 box for Winchell. To close the loop real quick on Candlepins for Cancer, you can and watch 10. all our uh, shows as well on Candlepin Bowling Network. Uh, to see the bowlers supporting a great cause and uh, to learn more about the charity. Also go to Candlepins number four, cancer.com, where you'll see we've raised 42,000 US dollars uh, or given, given that to families, uh, just financial assistance for those going through that difficult time in their lives. There's also been a lot of um, fundraising for the Lewiston families as well, mm. Um, mm. both with uh, the Candlepins for Cancer and other promotional efforts in the bowling community. And Ian says with the exchange rate, it's more like $2. So, yeah, that's why Paul's hitting everybody up for toonies. <laughs> <laughs> a winch will drop nine, and, or eight, and he's got the spare in the 10. Kevin Locke made a show of dropping a looney in the middle. Oh! And that's how Parkinson doesn't get 400. Rough. He would have needed uh, a strike need after it. anyway. He doesn't need it. Yeah. Uh, Harry's going to win this match. But it would have been so cool. And uh, so where do we stand on total? Winchell's got to fill. If he drops a strike, what's that do with the total? It's not enough. Uh, no, not. So no. Harry's will take six points out of eight. And the first time in uh, and second, this and tournament third. that we have seen any defeats uh, against the Maria's team. And for them to lose a match is highly unexpected. Um, Seven fill for Winchell to close it out with a 133 to 121. Will give us a rundown, Greg. Here it comes. Yeah. Final statistics in the match, 20 to, four, 20 to 16 marks in that string. Pinning was uh, four in favor of uh, Harry's All-Stars. They won by plenty more than that, of course. Overall in the match, 55 marks to 52. So three extra marks in total for Harry's All-Stars. Uh, so Maria Subs had three extra in pinning, but that didn't make the difference. Um, and... What else? Let's uh, take a look at totals here. Brian Mary, you see the lone 400, 401. Chris Parkinson, 390. John Winchell also anchoring very well, 389. Uh, excuse, oh my gosh, I've got that completely backwards. Excuse me, 6-2. That's how the score actually looks. Get that correct. Get that correct. Okay. Sheesh. Uh, 360s a couple other places, and I think that will be that. So, uh, Dan, I'll take this out here. On behalf of the Castle Paul Graham, my name is Greg Bugar. Thank you so much for your support by watching. Uh, thank you for your patience as well. We apologize for the earlier technical glitch, but thank you so much for enjoying another great match, and we'll have another one very, very soon. So long for now.